This is the call, and it comes down as a head. Rashidji won the toss. What are you going to do, please, and why? Uh, we're going to bat first, and uh, yeah, I think uh, the condition doesn't change much, but uh, I think uh, it's just about going uh, forward and taking that in the mind. Let's bat first and uh, put good total on the board, and we have that kind of bowling lineup, which I think the experienced bowling lineup where they can defend that. Is there anything to do with the pitch in that decision or that change of mind from a couple of days ago? What, why exactly do you want to put those runs on the board? To be honest, you know, on Sharjah wicket, it doesn't matter you bat first or ball first. Uh, uh, it's more about the intent and the positive mindset you play and you read the game. Uh, it's it's more important than you win the toss or you lose the toss. But uh, it's it's just about like uh, having some youngsters in the team, which will does allow them to play a little bit freedom and with freedom and uh, play the natural cricket not to have that kind of chasing target in the mind and uh, let them to express their skills and talent and uh, and, and to put good to total on the board, I think uh, the bowling lineup is there, which is more experienced in the batter and then I think we can defend that. Yeah, exceptional bowling lineup you have. Finally, just any changes to your starting 11 tonight? No, we're going to go with the same playing 11. Rashid, nice to see you. Thank you. Okay, Thank Afghanistan you. changing their mind, choosing to bat first this time. Paul, what would you have done? Yeah, look, I'm happy to have lost that toss, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> hasn't been a good omen winning the toss in this tour, so hopefully we can use that bit of luck today and continue that run. You described that win as, as a massive one over a very fine side with that outstanding world-class bowling attack. How much would a series win mean over them? Yeah, brilliant. Again, we just need to keep improving and getting better. Uh, it's a very tough team to play against, and we've already put last game on, in the past, and we start afresh today. OK, finally, any team news for me? Any changes? Uh, George comes in for Neil Rock. Very nice haircut. Cheers. Nice to see you, Thank Paul. You. Okay, that's Thank the you. news from the toss. Afghanistan, a change of their mind from the other day. They've won the toss. They're going to have a bat first. We can do it without. We can do it without teams. But were there any changes to Ireland? I didn't actually hear that. For die, just sorry. One change. Uh, who's out? That's all I need to know. Wait, say that, say that again, sorry, sorry. Hello, me me for starters. Ah, yeah. Yep. Okay, thank you. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the highlights. We've got the second T20 International, very important game, this one from the Shahzah Cricket Stadium between Afghanistan and also Ireland. Now, really important this game, of course, it is uh, just going back on the series, the game that Ireland won first up, and Afghanistan are going to play very nicely in the second game to level the series. Let's have a look at the teams that uh, have been selected for this. Just a couple of uh, key players to mention for starters for Afghanistan. They're going to want Gubaz to play nicely, or Mazai also, and he'd run from those two guys, and Rashid Khan is a, a wonderful player, so he's going to be leading from example, I'm sure. And for Ireland, Sterling is going to be key, as he always is. Tector as well. Adair is going to be a fine player and Josh Little is someone who's a left-arm seamer who is going to want to uh, bowl really nicely for them because they rely very heavily on him as well. Right eye, Afghanistan have won the toss and they've elected to bat first. Let's join the highlights. That was a field guess. Yeah, I said, I said don't worry about the... Stan, I said don't worry about the teams, I'll just mention names. Have to do it again? Right, um, Fadai, question to you. 
Question for you is, uh, what improvement Afghanistan need to make? That's your first question. And at some stage, we'll be talking about uh, Hamid Hassan. Okay. You plugged in. And for me? I told you about the, um, the rare island. What, what's going to mean to Ireland winning today? It'll be the fifth or the sixth. It'll be the sixth. It'll be a rare bite.
at his best. Oh, no way! Straight on the floor tonight, it's a very good catch. Crunched over mid-wicket for six. Coming into this T20 international series with a better record against Ireland, Afghanistan were the favourites. But their opponents were intent on making their mark. Harry Tector's contribution proved critical to their cause. His half-century held their innings together. A target of 150 was always going to be tough to chase in Sharjah. And Josh Little put Afghanistan on the defensive early on. The hosts never really recovered as Ben White kept up the pressure with four wickets. In the end, it was an easy win for Ireland. Afghanistan must win today to keep the series alive. We are set up today for a beauty. This is the second T20 international between Afghanistan and Ireland coming to you live from the Shahjar Cricket Stadium. Right, now let's just recap and uh, just uh, show you again what happened in the first one. Ireland getting up. They made 149 at the end. At one stage, it looked like about 130. But Tector played superb with his 56 not out of 34. Rashid was brilliant. Great to see him back. 3 for 19. Karote, 2 for 16 as well on his debut in this format. Afghanistan replied just 1 1 1. All out for Nelson. So rolled over by Ireland. It's at 32. White, 4 for 20. He was the player of the match. Little bowled nicely with 3 for 18. And Ireland winning by 38 runs. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Well, you're all set for this one. It should be an absolute beauty because Ireland won the first one. Afghanistan will be licking their wounds. They'll want to bounce back nicely today to make it one all for the final game, which happens tomorrow. So let's see what uh, unfolds over the next uh, three and a half, maybe four hours. Got a couple of guys alongside to chat to, Fadai and also Tino. Tino, let me start with you. If Ireland win today, it's going to be a big moment for them. It will indeed. Um, and I think the first thing I want to mention tonight is how well they did to pick themselves up after, you know, a pretty disappointing couple of ODI matches. But uh, outstanding um, way they went about the game a couple of days ago. It'll only be the sixth time that they've won an international T20 series if they do get over the line today. So I think uh, to go with the Test match win at the beginning of the tour, they're well set today. And Fadai, what about Afghanistan? I mean, they were obviously disappointed and disappointing. What do you want to see from them that's going to be better today? Uh, good evening, Hazy. Good evening, Tino. I think uh, Afghanistan need to do better in the fielding because at one moment we saw uh, a catch was dropped and Harry Tector took the game away. I think is applying themselves. I think they gave away their wickets much cheaply. And good thing is if Afghanistan win the toss, they should bat first because considering the conditions in UAE, Afghanistan have won nine matches batting first as for six matches that they have won batting second. Also, if you look at overall UAE matches, 20 have been won batting first and less have been won batting second. So application would mean a lot to me. Tino, we need to speak about Harry Tector. I mean, he was terrific. I mean, he was uh, the, the sole man responsible for them getting very close to that 150 mark. Yeah, he was. You know, when you look at his score and you look at the number of balls that he faced, 50-odd and 30-odd balls, you think that, oh, well, it's a normal T20 innings. But it wasn't because when he was out there and he walked out, there were wickets falling all the time at the other end. So the beginning of his innings was actually very slow. He was probably 25 off about 25 deliveries. Really did have to accelerate towards the back end. But what I liked about how he played was he went up the ground and if you go back to the one day matches he spoke about that hitting down the ground here at Sharjah the ball keeps low um, it's working for him and I think all the other batters can take a leaf out of his book we talked a lot about uh, the spin of Afghanistan with uh, Rashid Khan back and of course Karoto also playing and, and they both did very nicely but we didn't talk much pre-game about Ben White but he was terrific 
Oh yeah, absolutely. I think he took the game away from Afghanistan. Unfortunately for Afghanistan, in the last couple of series we see Afghanistan have been troubled with the leg spinner. Previously in Sri Lanka, Tua Hasaranga troubled Afghanistan. This time, why? Four wickets and that was his favourite. When you asked him, he said that was the one that he liked the most of Harota. He got one. But for me, the wicket of Muhammad Nabi was the one that took completely game away from Afghanistan. He bowled brilliantly and he deserved it. Now ben White got the uh, the Player of the Match uh, award, which is uh, great to see him get that. And of course, he was delighted with his performance as well. We want to find out a little bit more about him. Let's see what he's got to say. I can't really put it into words. It's, it's really, really, really nice to be back out here and really nice to be able to perform that well after such a long time out. Um, it's been a long road back from my injury back in September time, so and yeah, I'm just really happy and I think it will mean nothing now though if I don't go out and perform again and again. So yeah, it's, it's nice, but I'm going to park it there and we go again and look forward to the next T20. Oh, what a fantastic piece of bowling! Um, I really like the left-hander, Googly, top of off. Uh, practiced that a lot um, with Scotty and Iggy, so yeah, it's really, really nice that it came out and happened to be first ball as well, which was really nice and obviously put a lot of pressure on them. And yeah, it was just really, really nice. Look, it's obviously against their world-class bowling attack, it's always going to be tough and in such spin-friendly conditions, I would say. Um, I thought Harry, he's, he's world-class, in my opinion, and he's just shown that again and again, so it's no, no real surprise that he's able to put in performances like that for the team. Um, I thought they were, we, we kept pretty calm up in the dressing room when we lost a few wickets, and look, T20 cricket can go either way, and thankfully it went our way today, and I thought the lads finished off the innings very well. We've put in a very good performance, obviously, against a very good side, and I'm sure they'll be coming back twice as hard next T20, so we have to be twice as good as we were today. Uh, good stuff from uh, Ben White. Right over, Tino. I mean, what a treat for us to sit back and watch all these class spinners on, on show in this tournament. Yeah, it's been outstanding. I think going back to the Test match uh, in Abu Dhabi, we saw some wonderful performances from the Afghan spinners. The one who's really stuck out for me, especially with the Mujib and uh, Rashid Khan not being in the side for the ODIs, was Young Karatai. I mean, he's just come out of an under-19 World Cup, but the way he's commanded and the way he's been present in the middle is like somebody who's been doing uh, this for a very long time. So very nice to see him. And then Ben White as well coming in with those four crucial wickets. And I thought Ireland got it perfectly right. 149, which is uh, 145, has only been chased twice here. So good total already and then to get early wickets with the seamers and then Ben White to come in and clean up the middle was absolutely perfect so it's been great to see the spinners out there It'd be interesting today's a different surface to find out if it's going to play the same all right well on that point let's uh, find out what Niall O'Brien's got to say about this pitch that we're going to be playing on today well, it's absolutely beautiful conditions here in the middle in Sharjah, and we're on pitch six. But first of all, if you're watching all around Ireland, happy St. Patrick's Day to all of you. I hope you're celebrating inside. Pitch six. Now, what does that mean to dimensions? Easy for me. Ground staff, thank you very much. 70 yards all the way around. So in this day and age, it's not a big hit. When I look at this surface, though, the game one was difficult. It was slow. There was a lot of turn. I think this pitch is going to be much better. There's a little bit of grass, only a smidgen of grass, but the ball should skid on. It's harder. And let me just tell you, a little bit closely here this is an area the Ireland seamers and the Afghanistan seamers are going to try and exploit there's a little bit of grass and it's not as dry as the previous surface so what does that mean the seamers might get a little bit of nip not a great deal there might be a little bit of movement in Sharjah the game is played in three phases you must dominate the power play Ireland 48 for one in the power play at the back end you've got to keep wickets in hand Ireland did that on game one and obviously got the win here in Sharjah the middle phase how do you play spin Afghanistan five wickets wickets for the spinners. Less than five runs and over. Ireland must do better. Afghanistan is a bad unit. They really struggle against Ireland's seamers. Ireland's quick, taking six wickets. In the power play, dominate. Be ultra aggressive in the power play. Keep wickets in hand in the middle and set yourself up for the back end of the innings. All in all, pretty good surface. Much better than game one, I think. All right, Niall, thanks very much for that. Just a quick uh, stat to you, uh, Fadai. I mean, quite recently, Afghanistan have now lost five of their last seven games in this format against Ireland. Uh, well, I think in the context of how things play towards the 
T20 World Cup, Afghanistan won't really much be bothered with the stats. They'll be more looking at preparations, but yeah, absolutely, a win from here, squaring the series and then winning the series will really do them a word of good. OK, so forget about the past and move forward and make sure they try and get up here. And of course, uh, one of the important parts about that is what happens at the toss. Andrew Lennon was out there earlier. Let's find out. Time for the toss here in the second T20 International. Ireland have a 1-0 lead after that win two days ago. We'll have two matches in two days to finish out the series. The captains are alongside me, Rashid Khan of Afghanistan, joined by Paul Sterling of Ireland and Mr David Boone, the ICC match referee. Rash, you know what to do. Tails. Tails is the call. And it comes down as a head. <laughs> Rashid, you won the toss. What are you going to do, please, and why? Uh, we're going to bat first. And, uh, yeah, I think uh, the condition doesn't change much. But uh, I think uh, it's just about going uh, forward and taking that in the mind. Let's bat first and uh, put good total on the board. And we have that kind of bowling lineup, which I think the experienced bowling lineup where they can defend that. Is there anything to do with the pitch in that decision or that change of mind from a couple of days ago? What, why exactly do you want to put those runs on the board? To be honest, you know, on Sharjah wicket, it doesn't matter you bat first or ball first. Uh, uh, it's more about the intent and the positive mindset you play and you read the game. Uh, it's it's more important than you win the toss or you lose the toss. But uh, it's it's just about like uh, having some youngsters in the team, which will does allow them to play a little bit freedom and with freedom and uh, play the natural cricket not to have that kind of chasing target in the mind and uh, let them to express their skills and talent and uh, and, and to put good to total on the board. I think uh, the bowling lineup is there, which is more experienced in the batter and then I think we can defend that. Yeah, exceptional bowling lineup you have. Finally, just any changes to your starting 11 tonight? No, we're going to go with the same playing 11. Rashid, nice to see you. Thank you. OK, Thank Afghanistan you. changing their mind, choosing to bat first this time. Paul, what would you have done? Yeah, look, I'm happy to have lost that toss, to be honest. It uh, hasn't been a good omen winning the toss in this tour, so hopefully we can use that bit of luck today and continue that run. You described that win as, as a massive one over a very fine side with that outstanding world-class bowling attack. How much would a series win mean over them? Yeah, brilliant. Again, we just need to keep improving and getting better. Uh, it's a very tough team to play against, and we've already put last game on, in the past, and we start afresh today. OK, finally, any team news for me? Any changes? Uh, George comes in for Neil Rock. Very nice haircut. Cheers. Nice to see you, Thank Paul. You. Okay, that's Thank the news you. from the toss. Afghanistan, a change of their mind from the other day. They've won the toss. They're going to have a bat first. Lenny, thanks very much. Righto, there's the Afghanistan lineup for today. Um, well, I think good thing is that they are trusting the young lads again. Just give him another chance. Rahmanullah Gurbaz have to step up, score runs. Uh, he was the player of the series. Asmatullah Omar, a lot is counted on it. I like the intent from Ishaq Rahimi in the previous match. Muhammad Nabi, a lot will depend on him. But Kharotai, uh, that's been the man to watch out for. Rashid Khan is back. He took three wickets in the last game. Naveen and Farooqi are really good to have. So quite a good young side, I said, under 24 years of age. Quite a promising side. And obviously settled to Tino Island. Yeah, they'll want to get a good start uh, when they come out and bat. We saw flashes of that in the first game. Didn't quite carry on as much as they would have liked. Nice to see Jockrell back in the side, unwell the other day. So he's obviously fit and healthy. And I think on two points. One, the experience that he's got in this format. Two, we've seen that the ball has been turning out there. So I think uh, he'll be very handy with his left arm spin if he gets a couple of overs in there. And of course, we know what he can do with the bat as well. OK, in case you're just joining us now, Afghanistan have won the toss and have elected to bat. So just very briefly, this power play now becomes very important. Well, absolutely. I think one thing they've done right is win the toss, bat first, because that's what they fancy. Uh, but absolutely, the power play gives you the 70% of the game. We saw in the first T20 early wickets and they were not able to come back. So it's very important that they capitalize inside the power play and make a lot of runs. Gorbaz is the one to watch out for. OK, we like uh, just getting up to date with the coaching staff and find out more about their thoughts. Devender caught up with the bowling coach for Afghanistan, Hamid Hassan. Hamid Hassan, the legends of the Afghanistan cricket team and now the bowling coach joins us for a brief chat. Hamid, uh, since Asia Cup, your team has been delivering goods, especially the fast bowlers in particular. It must be a satisfying feeling for you as a coach giving back to the Afghanistan cricket team? Uh, Bismillah rahman rahim definitely. Yeah. The team is uh, doing well, especially the bowlers. As you see from last couple of months, I'm working with the boys and uh, we would like to 
improve more and more and more, especially in their towards. Uh, and uh, with the new ball, they're doing well. A uh, small uh, measure of problem we are facing in uh, their towards. But Alhamdulillah, in last ODI, if you see Afghanistan, ball has been brilliantly. And even in the last T20 game, we ball well, but unfortunately, we couldn't accelerate in the batting. That's why uh, we're still a little bit facing some issues. But inshallah, for the World Cup, we'll be very well prepared. And this uh, first uh, three 20 matches against Ireland is very crucial for us. And uh, hopefully, uh, the team will be fully ready for the upcoming World Cup. How challenging was it to you for, for as, a, as a coach, not having the services of Mujib and Rashid uh, in the Test match and ODI series as well? Yeah, definitely. There are big names, uh, big impact. Uh, whoever we play against Rashid or Mujib, uh, they feel the pressure against all the time. And Rashid is uh, such a huge asset for Afghanistan. His presence uh, always, like, you know, something for the team is very important. And Alhamdulillah, he's back in the squad and uh, he's a captain in the team. And uh, he performed really well after a long time, like after five months injury. And then he recovered and he bowled brilliantly, he got three wickets. And hopefully uh, he continue the same. And Mujib, yeah, he's still uh, not feeling well. And hopefully he will be ready for the World Cup as well. Most of the bowlers have been playing franchise league cricket. How difficult it is as a coach to manage the workload of, of those bowlers and also the role of the high performance centre? Uh, yeah, that's uh, true. They will go after this for the leagues and stuff. Uh, IPL is coming and uh, I think uh, we are managing to co coordinate to their coaches and uh, fitness trainers. Uh, our head coach, he's also stay in touch with them. A fitness trainer, as a bowling coach, I'm also keen to see our bowlers in the World Cup fully fit and ready for the big event. Thank you, Hamid Hassan, the rock star of Afghanistan cricket, for joining us. Thank you, Devinder. Yeah, thanks, guys. Nice to uh, hear the insight. Uh, one thing that uh, I'm looking forward to is the head-to-head -head between the, the two captains. Rashid Khan has actually got Paul Sterling out eight times in T20s in one day, so that's quite a record. It is quite a record. Um, you'll find that these two play against a lot against each other in white ball cricket. So I don't think it's uh, something that uh, Paul Sterling would fret about. Um, definitely, I like the way that he's gone about the series so far. I think he's been confident. I don't think he's far away from a big score. So it'll be interesting to see if that big score will come today. OK, right. -o. Thank you, Fadai. Thanks very much for your thoughts leading into the game. Of course, you're backing. Uh, who are you backing, by the way? Just a, just a guess. A good game. I'm looking forward oh. to the openers first. I want Sidi Qatal to score runs because he's been a little short on confidence. He needs a lot of runs. But let's see. We have hopefully have a good game. I think we will have a terrific game. We had a, had a nice game uh, in the one day series as well. And uh, let's hope that uh, Afghanistan fire up, particularly that man. He's a wonderful player, Gabaz. He didn't get going in the last game, dismissed in the first delivery. But uh, hopefully it's a different story for him today. Tino, thanks very much as well for you. Right, let's go and join our commentators and pick up the action. Welcome along to Sharjah Cricket Ground. Afghanistan winning the toss, deciding to bat. Ramanullah Gurbas got a first ball up on Friday. Looking to make up for that on this ground. That best of 100, that was against the UAE in December. And at the other end, Sadiq Atal. Very much a fledgling career for him, but he actually made his T20I uh, debut here at this ground against Pakistan in March of last year. Mark Adair, one of only 11 bowlers in the history of T20I cricket to have taken 100 wickets or more in men's 2020 internationals. And he's going to begin proceedings this evening from the pavilion end. Just waiting to ensure that all is in readiness. play says the umpire here we go and straight away Ramanullah Gurbas underway got uh, Niall O'Brien and 
Devendra Kumar alongside me. Good evening to you both, gentlemen. Niall, first of all, let's uh, chat to you about Ireland. It's going to be such a significant evening for them if they can get that win, a series win in 2020 internationals. Yeah, massive, huge, huge opportunity for Ireland, who are excellent, I thought, two nights ago. They played a superb game of cricket. Not a complete performance, but not often you get that full 40 overs of satisfaction. But I thought Ireland were so good. Mark Adair has been exceptional for about two years, really, with ball in hand, leading this attack. And the power play was where Ireland did real damage. 43 for three. They'll be looking to emulate that again tonight. Siddhi Katel off the mark. Devenda, good evening to you as well. And, well, everything that could go wrong did go wrong for Afghanistan on Friday. How are they going to put things right tonight? Brian, good evening, Niall, and good evening to everyone tuning into this broadcast. Well, they cannot afford to lose this series. That's uh, been the expectation from the crowd back home. They want Afghanistan to win and especially beat Ireland at Sharjah. Nice battle developing. Gurbaz versus Adair. Appeal for a catch behind. Well, the Ireland boys simply cannot believe that. Well, if you watched the game two nights ago, this is a familiar scene for Ireland. They cannot believe it. For me, it looked like a simple feather. Away swinger. Let's have a listen. Gurbaz looks around straight away. Tucker catches cleanly. Oh, I think... I just thought reaction was every, everybody from Ireland. Umpire... Bismillah Jean Shinwari says, absolutely not. Early in game two. Oh, Devender. Tension here in Charger. I love that, Brian. I absolutely love what Ireland have brought to the table already. Four balls, they're right up for this. Just look at this, look at the reaction here of Paul Sterling. He's not really interested. He joins in later on with the appeal, but first up, he wasn't really getting excited. You do know Paul Sterling's the most relaxed man in the world, though. But Brian, we saw a lot of emotion a couple of nights ago in that first T20. At some stages, it went slightly overboard, but I love what Ireland brought. The aggression, the intent, the desire to get the job done. That's what you want in T20 cricket. Brilliant start here from Mark Day. He's got the ball moving, he's got the ball talking. So Gurbaz has got 19 runs of 21 deliveries against Mark Adair in T20 internationals. In the previous game, straightforward catch on the boundary. First ball of the innings. That was the start of uh, things going badly wrong for Afghanistan in that uh, power play. 43 for three they were and they never recovered. Big appeal again, and again it's not out. And again, the Island boys can't believe it. It's the end of the over, and what a dramatic first over that was. Afghanistan, four without loss. Afghanistan unchanged this evening from Friday's opening game. Ireland one change for them. George Dockrell coming back after illness for Neil Rock. Josh Little, who was outstanding, particularly with the new ball on Friday. Goodness me, 
the delivery he bowled to dismiss Omar Zai was an absolute beauty. He was on a hat trick at one stage, and he's going to be charging in from the Sharjah club end. No slip and play, slightly surprising. He bowled very well here in the ILT20, Josh Little, not long ago. He got the ball to swing and nip and bowl with good pace. He was excellent. Game one. Hitting this chance on the way through and Bills not coming off. Absolutely thumps into the off peg. Have a look at this. Arnold were going up for the LBW. That's unbelievable. That is incredible. How the bail has not been dislodged. Mark it there. You've got to bowl faster. Bend your back. Champions Trophy, India versus New Zealand in the final. Nathan Estel surviving similar fashion and going on to win the Champions Trophy in Nairobi. A cracking Yorker and a fine piece of fielding at short fine leg by Mark Adair. Well, this is exceptional bowling. This is not something you see Josh Little do a great deal. Bowl a big in swinger to a left hander. That's a beauty. The seam position was spot on there, nearly sneaking through. And as a left-hand bat, you're used to the ball swinging away from a left arm like Josh Little. That's excellent skills. Oh, yes! He swung one one way, and then he swung one another. That's wonderful bowling. And Ramanella Gerbas, he got a duck on Friday, and he's out for three this time. Ireland get the early wicket. Afghanistan, one down in just the second over. Devastating blow. Early on into the innings, Gurbaz once again perishing early. Excellent delivery from Joshua Little, just bringing the ball back into the right hand batsman, nipping off the surface, hitting the off stump. They are delighted. Ireland on top. Early wicket to celebrate. Gurbaz with promise, not delivering again. Out for three, six for one. In at number three, Ibrahim Zadran. He opened in the tests and the one-day internationals. 797 runs, different position, playing at first down rather than opening the batting with Gurbaz. Different experience altogether. He's been thinking too much about his presence at the crease these days. Excellent delivery. I'll tell you what, it does nip back, but this beats Ramanullah Gurbaz for pace. Beats them all, ends up with seam and pace. Just watching the the numbers, the vendor for Ibrahim, his strike rate of 105 is slightly surprising. It's a decent sample size and he's got five fifties, but the strike rate of just 105 is slightly surprising for a man of his qualities. It is definitely, they expect him to bat with more freedom. He likes to take time, he likes to perform consistently about getting runs, runs and runs rather than thinking about expressing himself. He's putting too much value on his wicket. Another absolute beauty from Josh Little. What a tremendous first over from him and a tremendous start for Ireland. Afghanistan winning the toss, deciding to bat. They're seven for one.
Must win game this for Afghanistan, the second of three in this T20I series. He's got excellent technique, but the wicket to fall, Gurbaz, C movement, and was done with the pace as well. Well, Gurbaz has given the impression that it kept low, it didn't. He's beaten for pace, and he's beaten on the length. Top class from Josh Little, Gurbaz missed out in game one, and he's gutted, he's very disappointed. That's a great bit of bowling, though, from Josh Little. Wasn't quite off the middle of the bat, that, but it'll go for four. Bold stroke over the top from Ibrahim Zadran. First boundary for Afghanistan. First real shot of authority from the men in blue. Quite right, Brian, I think it was more toe of the bat. But the technique is very sound, as we've seen right through the Test match and ODI format. And this is what we were alluding to, Devender, a bit more aggression early in his innings. Well, I have seen him in domestic cricket, in Shpegis in particular, outscoring Gurbaj as well at times. Well, I had a good look at this pitch and I was glad the ground staff moved from pitch four to pitch six. A bit firmer, not quite as dry, and a little bit of grass for the seamers to work with. Not a great deal, but just enough. I think the ball might skid on a little bit more, especially come the second innings. I asked the groundsman, Brian, at about 5 o'clock, 5.30, I said, what was the reasons to change the surface? And I think, and we saw Jonathan Trott, the head coach, and Heinrich Milan, after the first T20, have a long conversation on the pitch that was used. And I think both coaches said, listen, we wouldn't mind a fresh surface to play this game on. Penny for his thoughts, not going as he would like. Well, that's gone straight up in the air. Tector, another wicket for Ireland. Ibrahim Zadran being positive down the ground, but that positivity has been his downfall. Another miscue, and this time he doesn't get away with it. Ibrahim Zadran is a fine player, trying to up the ante after the demise of Gurbaz early on. Looking to take the charge. A boundary already from the over. Looking to go down the ground. A little bit of C movement. And just getting the outer part of the bat. Just slicing it rather than getting it from the center of the plate. Leading edge. And catching will always be good. With, especially when Tector is there. Brilliant catch taken. Over his shoulder. Ibrahim goes for five. Two down for 11 Afghanistan. Mohamed Ishak in at number four. Oh, and there's an appeal for LBW now, and the finger's gone up. Adair's on a hat trick. What a start for Ireland. Brilliant stuff. He's still out there, Ishak, but he's got to go. Oh, this is exceptional for Mark Adair, exceptional from Ireland. Hitting their straps right from the outset. Right in front again. That's bang in front. 
impact would have been in line of the off. So Marquez says, please, Bismillah, Jan Shinwari, the birthday man, give me the wicket. He has. Ishak's got to go for a duck. 11 for three. What a start this is for Ireland. And in at number five, Asmatullah Omazai. He was at first ball on Friday, remember? And you know, in his last five 2020 internationals, he's made three ducks, all of them first ball. He's at the non striker's end now, though. Mark Adair, brilliant stuff. Slicing it, leading edge in a simple catch, eventually completed then. In line with the stunts, no agitation in the mind of the umpire on that occasion. Give me a slip, Paul Sterling. Give me a slip. Paul swinging. Given as a wide by Ahmad Shah Durrani. Well, this is the end of. Ishak, let's have a look at the impact. I thought just in line of the off stump. Yeah, I think that's fair enough. I think that's fair enough, you know. Probably going to clip that top of the off stump and knock the bales off. Well, you mentioned the ball swinging, Niall. In the lead-up to today's game, there was some uh, spraying of the outfield that took place, due repellent. So hopefully that will mean it's more of a contest for longer this evening. Spray being applied to the outfield to try and stop the dew from forming on the grass and that in turn will make it easier for the bowlers to hold the ball and also hopefully for the ball to retain the ability to swing. A lot of damage has already been done. Omar Jai has the capability to change the course of the action. Not much of time to you know, spend time at the crease. It's time to think about that prospect of getting runs, boundaries, capitalizing the power play overs. No sign of any due there. Long may that continue. George Dockrell feeling that back in the side. Hasn't been in the best of health in the last week or so. I'm just having a look at the footwork. Not great footwork by Ishak Mark Adair, who's had a gold in 24 months. He can't even say it's a, a purple patch. It's a bit like Harry Tector, Murgers. He's played so well now for about two years consistently. Red ball, white ball. So with Mark Adair, with the ball in hand, leading the attack, and Harry Tector, literally a score runs every time he walks to the crease, it seems. Ireland have a leader in both facets of the game. It's a wide. You're right, because just listen to some of the names that uh, he's associated with in terms of getting uh, 100 wickets in 2020 international cricket marker day. Shakib Al Hassan, Tim Saudi, Ish Saudi, Rashid Khan, Mitch Santner, Lasith Malinga, Mustafiza, Adil Rashid, Hasaranga, Shadab Khan. It's really august company that he's in. Just 11 players. Oh, there's a little nick to that. Fingers gone up, another wicket, and it's another first baller for Omazai. Goodness me. Four first ball ducks in his last six 2020 international innings. He can't buy a run, and neither can Afghanistan. They're 14 for four. Mental 
disintegration. That's what Steve Waugh used to call, and that's what's happening to Omazai right now. He's walking to the wicket, knowing he's out of form, knowing there's nothing going his way. The footwork, it was there to hit. It's a healthy nick. Omazai, I'm sorry, it's another first baller. 14 for four. Did you watch him from the top of his mark? Well, goodness me, if you're an Afghanistan supporter, put your hand in front of your face. Mohammed Nabi in at number six, the man for a crisis. Needs just five runs to become Afghanistan's leading run scorer in 2020 internationals. Has he nicked that or has he hit the ground? My impression was that he hit the ground. And I think all the Ireland uh, players know that too. Just moving away, bad hitting the ground. Interesting mode of dismissals for Azmatullah Omar Jai. In the previous match, the ball coming in. Two deliveries, one was declared wide outside the upstump and nicking it, one which was going away. Defense, Afghanistan have been rocked early, 14 for four after four overs. Fourteen for four. How extraordinary. What a start to this game. Here's a look at uh, the two wickets. Brilliant stuff from uh, Adair at the moment. Two for eight he's got. Two balls. That's the second one. I wasn't convinced about that, I must say. I think it was just outside the line of off stump. But it was given. That was the third to go down. But four down now. So how extraordinary. Four overs gone. What about that, Lenny? Well, absolutely extraordinary. And signs of an Irish side growing in confidence in a big way under their new white ball captain Paul Sterling only came in permanently at the start of the year this is a completely different team to a year ago McCarthy now I can't believe they're not bowling uh, Adair by the way a couple of overs two for eight here's a look at the last wicket I, don't, I think this is outside the line oh this is the last one sorry just the neck caught behind and poor old Asmatullah Ormatsai is having Bit of a series to forget with the bat, isn't he, for Dyke? Good evening, lads. It's been a terrible start. Four ducks. It's not so easy as a batter. He's a good player. He's done wonders in the one day. He just has to do it in the T20, and Afghanistan needed it today. Fortunately, couldn't do it. A lot will now depend on this new Sidi Qatal. See, work to be done here. Shot the stumps. Hazy, look at the energy from Ireland in the field. This is, I think, what every Irish fan has been wanting to see. At times, particularly post-COVID, it, it just went missing. There's a passion, there's a buzz. Look at the energy. It's obviously easy to do it when the opposition are 14 for four. But there are signs in the passion we saw in the test match, that historic victory up in Abu Dhabi. I thought even in parts of that. First ODI, the partnership between Tucker, Tucker and Tector. There's an awful lot to like about the way Ireland are going about their business now. 
They look a completely different unit to times gone by. Very, very exciting for Irish cricket fans. Straight to the fielder. Extraordinary. Last game, there were uh, three runs on the board and with correction, four runs on the board and with three wickets down. Afghanistan and now 14 for four. How do you see it? Is that an improvement from four runs to 14? The equation tells you extra a couple of runs, I guess? Yeah, 10. <laughs> well, I think they... See, one thing I like, whatever the situation, Muhammad Nabi will bring the best out of you. He's a great mentor. He's played a lot of international cricket, really seasoned campaigner. Really good to have him out there. Too early, far too early. Quick single. Would have been in had there been a direct hit, so it would have been OK. He's not the quickest mover. A little bit of a, a thumbs up with a sly look. Yeah, I think you're right. I, I think the only reason that he, he would have been home was that slight fumble. As always, this is a Firebird production for the Afghanistan Cricket Board. We're delighted to bring you these pictures. And Hazy, I have a, a substantial number of messages from back in Ireland. Irish cricket fans, it's a close-knit, small-knit community. They are loving every second of this broadcast right across the tour. And why wouldn't they? A test match victory, yes, defeat in the ODIs. 1-0 up. They're on the verge of doing something very special here, winning a series against Afghanistan. Yeah, it'll be the uh, sixth time they've won a, a bilateral T20 series if they get up today uh, certainly uh, doing brilliantly so far hard into the ground thought about one also would have been home had there been a direct hit well everything happening out in the middle Sadiq Adal running to try and take the strike he thought that it cleared the field up ground stuff has done an amazing job Ireland will certainly tell you Afghanistan have lost four wickets Probably it was a good toss to lose for Paul Sterling. I think he said this, it was a good toss to lose. It's a beautiful service. Nile told us they'll nip a little bit. Ireland has really cashed it nicely. McCarthy again, just one off the over so far. Make that two with a wide down the leg side. Yeah, the reason there is a, a wry smile and those exact words from Paul Sterling at the toss is the following. He said it's not been a good tour to win the toss on. The reason why Afghanistan won the toss in the test match, they went down to defeat. Then Paul Sterling won the two tosses in the ODI series. They lost both those games. And a couple of days ago, the first T20, Afghanistan won the toss, elected to field, beaten out of sight by 38 runs. You can't win a toss and win a game, it seems, on this tour. And Ireland will be more than pleased with that. Yeah, they're buzzing at the moment. Giving their fielders, uh, or the bowlers, I should say, outstanding support. It's cracked away. Nicely played. That's going to go for four. That's going to help their cause. End of the over. Six from it. Two for eight, two for six. I would have kept certainly one on, maybe two. I would have kept them both on. Another wicket would have uh, wrapped this up well and truly, I would have thought. Paul Sterling thinks otherwise. Another look at the boundary, last ball. Just a little bit leg side. Little continues. And that was, I thought, a real option for Paul Sterling in the first T20I when again Ireland were on top with those early wickets. And reduce them to four for three with the dismissal of Armitage. Little was all over everyone in that first power play, but he was taken off for this over. It was Gareth Delaney that bowled an over of leg spin in the power play. Another sign of this man's cricketing mind, Paul Sterling. I don't think Ireland have ever produced a better cricketing brain than their current white ball captain. All that franchise experience around the world using it yet again. Just the single. One thing he's changed from the previous T20 is he's given third over to Josh Slater. 
thinking that he actually has already gotten two wickets. He's getting the purchase off the service. Beautifully bowling the in-swingers and the out-swingers. Got Rahmanullah Gurbas bowled to a beautiful in-swinger and then got Asmatullah Omar Zai to a wonderfully bowled out-swinger. He needs another over. Captain wants another wicket. Break. Good to see him. Nice and animated too. Nice and straight. Good stuff from Little. Quick single. That's all they can get at the moment. A couple of singles off uh, the stuff from Little. And you could see him there. As is Niall O'Brien described him, very cool, very laid back character, Paul Sterling. But he's so animated in terms of his leadership tonight because he knows what's on the line here. Maybe one of Ireland's best ever series victories in this format. They could get it done tonight and maybe then be thinking about a clean sweep. They're right on top at the moment, but Afghanistan, particularly the likes of Rashid Khan, to come. Oh, that's picked up nicely. That's a wonderful shot. That's gone for six. That's almost into camera five into the tower what a beautiful shot that is this will give a lot of happiness to the afghanistan fans he was on to it short pitch and muhammad nabi up for the task what a hit that is Shpagiza. beautifully followed by camera five two well done i was just about to say with rashid khan and muhammad nabi you would suspect certainly they're going to keep fighting and not just with that blow, but just before that, he's now gone past Mohamed Shazad as the leading run scorer in this format. Nine off this over so far. Two balls remaining. Good stuff from Nobby. He's cracked that away. Call is for two again. He might get two more. Brilliant fielding. Top dive. Tag teamwork. Two runs. Fine fielding. He just continued the chase. He didn't give up. Andrew earlier said that there's a lot of positive energy among the Irish fielders. Watch this. So beautiful. 100% effort. That's so good to see. Yeah, it's Curtis Comfort with this wonderful effort. We'll have to just see what the umpire says. But to the naked eyes, I believe he's saved two runs. And George Dockrell, look at the way in which he supported Camfer here. He kept it to just two. That's two runs saved think on the evidence that we have just these two angles you'd suspect hazy that that should be okay did it pop up and uh, hit him in the cap as well yeah it did i think it just hit the cap also oh that would have been very close ah uh, this is going to tell us just watch to see if there's any movement with that uh, boundary cushion at all as it gets past him no that's great that's outstanding fielding good stuff he's obviously feeling pretty good at the moment he missed the last game not feeling well Definitely an element of, of a return to the brand of Irish cricket that inspired Irish people to get into this great sport of ours back in that golden generation, the Adrian Birrell, the Phil Simmons era, Heinrich Milan and his staff doing a fantastic job alongside now the white ball captain of Sterling, fielding so, so key in this format. Nice worked again by Nabi. It's a good over this one. A dozen runs off at six gone, 32 for four. Ireland will be acutely aware that Afghanistan will keep fighting and probably keep counter-attacking from what we've seen there from Mohammed Nabi in that over. Rashid Khan I thought was hitting away a little low the last time around. Might just consider getting himself up to number eight in the order. Rebuilding. Partnership's 18 at the moment. They need to get a really solid partnership together here. Nabi is uh, clearly the one that's going to be controlling things. The player of the match, Ben White, has uh, been introduced. Six overs are up, so the power play is done. And a lot of damage has also been done by Ireland. Well, I tell you what, this is the worst score for Afghanistan against Ireland inside the power play six overs. Ben White, what a day he had. Four wickets for him. Got his career best. Previously, he had two, and now he got four a four for four him he forced his way into Andrew yeah, player of the match look at that eyes oh, on two things there great story Ben White Mikey 
Grant's father was an international rugby player, not for Ireland, but for New Zealand. Grant White, I think five times he was capped for the All Blacks. Grew up then, he came across to Ireland to play for the Lansdowne Rugby Club as a professional rugby player. Chopped away, nice solid shots, four runs, good work from Nubby. I think Barry McCarthy will be disappointed with his efforts here at backward point. Definitely body on the line. Might not have been able to stop the single, should have stopped the boundary. Mohamed Nabi will take that. We were talking about the Irish fielding, pumped up. Is that the start for the momentum Afghanistan is looking for? That's kept low. That's going to have one or two of the Afghanistan spinners sitting a bit more upright in the dugout. Ben is from a part of Dublin where there's an ever-growing culture of cricket now in, in the sort of north inner city. Plays at the historic Phoenix Cricket Club. Went to school in West Dublin. Come, come, come. And certainly, you think about the traditional hotbeds of South Dublin and then Fingal in North County Dublin, Derry and Belfast. But now in West Dublin, there's clubs springing up all over the place. And a great story. Grant White staying on, fell in love, met Ben's mother. And I think every Irish cricket fan is happy that we've got well, maybe a little bit of Kiwi blood in there, but he's fully out in an Irish, born in Dublin. And that Phoenix Cricket Club, very proud in the north inner city. Two balls left in this over now. Thinking about two, but not there. Tell you what, he's been working on his googly. We asked him which one was his favourite wicket of the four that he got in the first T20. He said, the one that I got with the googly of... Nangyalai Harote got him bowled out, been practicing that. He had a wonderful, wonderful game. Came back from an injury and came back really strong. He's got a good start to the first over, only five runs. Back to off to bat fielding. Yeah, quite correctly treating him with uh, respect. I know he's got that very good wrong -un. was it seven gone nicely ball 37 for four hazy i thought you might just bite on my mention of rugby given ireland winning the six nations last night in st patrick's day to boot great time for our sports fans i watched it. it was wonderful watched it i could not believe the number of tackles that scotland had to put in quite extraordinary great stuff from ireland yeah, back to back champions now the six nations something that isn't done very often at all when did australia come <laughs> so what did you say, Hazy? When does South Africa come or when do Australia come? Australia. <laughs> they are those reigning Six Nations champions. You're going to see leg spin from both ends. And one more tidbit of in info for you from the Irish camp. I think the barber's been in, Hazy. Five, if not six, haircuts. Paul Sterling saw Josh Little's go faster stripes. Gareth Delaney. I'm not a great one to describe hair, Ahmed. What's that, a short back and sides? I don't know really. I actually don't know about rugby too. I thought I'm felt, I'm fe feeling left out. <laughs> I reckon you'd make a good. I'm gonna say you'd make a good hooker in the scrum. That'd be your position, Ahmed. Delaney now. Just pumped down the ground. Just the single. I'm gonna look. I'm gonna look at it. Google it and see what it is like. Well, we will get back to the cricket, but the hooker in rugby, they throw the line out. So if your throwing was good on the cricket field, you might be able to service your, your rugby team in due course. Concern still on the faces of the Afghan bench. They're used to performing very well here in the UAE across all formats. But Ireland have been an inspired form with the change to the shortest, shortest format right on top. So let's have a quick think about uh, Afghanistan's bowling. We need to watch the surface, see if it does turn. It's been just a little bit, not a great deal. It's sliding on a fraction. Faruqi, of course, will get some swing with that new ball. That's picked up nicely. He has slammed that for half a dozen. What a beauty that is. Right out of the screws. Sidi Qatal into the party. He's been short on runs. He won't runs. He's been lack on confidence. And I told you, Nabi will bring the best out of him. And here we go. A ball into his zone. And he sweeps this, slot sweep this nicely for a huge maximum. See another one almost going out of the ground. I want to see one go out the ground, right out the park. That's my target tonight. It's T20 cricket. They're having some uh, terrific shots. Oops, that's chipped up. 
They might be thinking of two, but uh, they won't. Gee, that is a big hit, Hazy, because you think about the fact we've come across a couple of pitches. And you'll see here, that's the longer side for the left-hander, but it was right into the slot and dispatched very nearly. You got your want almost onto the canvas roof instead another one that just hits the bar. I want a, I want a clean one right over the top of the canvas, over the peaks. The Afghanistan fans are right behind you. <laughs> Nicely played, that's going to go for four, that's a lovely shot, beautiful stuff from Nubby. He's gone to 24 or 15, now he's playing superbly. Well, that's good to see the positive intent despite the wicket falling. Mohamed Nabi looks really fluid today, he's been middling it very nicely. Strike rate is close to 200, 160 now, what a beautiful shot that is. Beautiful drive, away from the reach of the field in four runs. Just a, a quick early shout. If they continue at this rate, they'll get to the 130 mark. If they continue at 6.39, that still means that uh, someone's going to have to bat deep. Someone like Nubby's going to have to bat very deep in this innings. Probably a, a few signs from Afghanistan as well that they've identified Delaney as possibly being the weak option in the, in the five bowlers that Paul Sterling would see as his primary five options. Does have Curtis Camford, George Docker up his sleeve if he wants to go there too. It's another good over. 13 runs from it, brings up the 50 as well. Good partnership, and there's 36. Eight gone, 50 for four. Fifty for four, eight overs in. Afghanistan cricket board delegates. Oh, sliding down the leg side, looking to go up and over the onside field. Mohammad Nabi. His innings will be very crucial for Afghanistan this evening. Very good evening, Nala Bryan. You seem to be enjoying yourself tonight. Loving life, Tino. Good game on, a, on the hands here, on the cards. Afghanistan fighting hard, rocked early, but they've played well since. In that partnership with Navi and Atal, 37. Southpaw with a really beautiful six over that deep mid wicked region. Navi has found the middle of his blade right from the outset. Looked like that one just kicked slightly low. It's gone at it with the straight bat, so easy to adjust. It's when you've got the horizontal bat shot that you struggle sometimes. Another couple to the total. surface so far this evening ball just sliding on really from white well he's not a big turner Tino I actually would nearly call him a googly bowler as opposed to a leg spinner and Gareth Delaney is not a big turner so no real surprise there's no grip as of yet this evening might be different though with Afghanistan in the air it's gone wide in the field and extra cover 
Will it get to the boundary? Curtis Kampfer gives chase, but not able to stop it. 57 for four. They're coming back, coming back strongly. X coming fine to the third mid boundary for four. Partnership prospering for Afghanistan. Uh, Curtis Camper didn't bowl in the first T20I. Comes into the attack, and I like the approach from Muhammad Nabi. Yes, it's a thick outside edge, but I like the way Nabi. Is getting on the front foot. He's being proactive. I feel at this venue, if he sit and watch and be timid, it's very difficult to score. Put back the ball, take the aggressive approach, and Nabi so far striking it beautifully. You know, there's acres of space in front of cover. So that's why he was very happy to try and slash that in front of square. He's been betting with some comfort. Not far away from Paul Sterling at short cover. To his right, the ball traveling through the outfield. That will make it slightly easier for the batsman. The movement will be gone. 47 of 35. Good recovery. 146 or 150. That's something that Afghanistan will be searching for. Yeah, they're scoring at 6.5 at the moment. Having lost four wickets, you would think if they'd lost a little bit less, then that run rate probably would be slightly ahead of where it is now. The problem they've got is those wickets, Niall, and they need to make sure that this partnership goes for as long as possible. Yes, yeah, it's, it's not new though, Tino. They've lost wickets in the power play quite regularly in recent times, Afghanistan. There has been an issue against the new ball. This series, I dare a little with that new ball, have been exceptional. It was never going to be easy. But some techniques were found wanting. What a shot. But it came off the bottom part of the bat, but enough on it anyway to get into the boundary. Brings up the 50 partnership in 37 balls. Well, what I like about this, Tino, is where he's trying to hit the ball. He's trying to hit the ball down the ground. Yes, not quite out of the screws. In Sharjah, I sound like a broken record. Strong shots down the ground. Excellent partnership. Left hand, right hand, combining really well here. Counter-punching Ireland nice. And now Afghanistan getting into a position of strength after that early rocking the Ireland series. That's very good. Experience and youth. Good to see. Oh, it's the pull shot. It won't carry down to long on. Nubby keen to come back for two. I mean, you know, I mentioned the the techniques of the Afghanistan batters up top. It's a slammed into the surface from Camford. Docker was trying to hand it down. I'm I'm thinking Gerbaz up front beaten by pace with a little bit of seam movement back in and Mark Adair's dismissal of Ishak LBW just techniques that were found wanting with the ball moving something Jonathan Trotton of Council will have to look into in the air there's nobody at point very backward whoever is at point so they get a single 10 overs gone it's the halfway stage 68 for four, it's also time for a refreshment.
عجيب خليك لدنغرونا خايستا ازداري او شنبغونا تازا تازا ويبيروحونا تازا تازا ويبيروحونا زمان دهيل ودنيا دا دامي خاورة دانيكا Beautiful Afghanistan, wonderful people, rich culture and heritage. T20 International number two. Afghanistan electing to bat first today in early trouble. 14 for four inside four overs, but it's been a partnership of substance between Nabi and Natal, 54 and 39. How important is this partnership, Niall? Well, it goes without saying, take it deep. You mentioned take it as deep as you can. So far, they've played the slower bowlers really, really well, Tino. Staying leg side of the ball when the ball is sliding onto the surface as a batter, stay leg side of the ball so you don't get your pad in the way of your blade. You can get access to the ball, and Nabi has showed some real nous and real experience. What's been most impressive against spin, especially, is the aggressive intent. Slog sweepers on here. That's a left hander against a slow bowler in Ben White. That slog sweep is on right now. Niall O'Brien, have you got a piece in his ear? I've just been there as a lefty. Oh, I like a bit of this. Well, I called him a googly bowler, and I was the googly. Again, I don't mind the option as a batter. Good from White. Bit of courage to get the ball above the eye line. Yeah, he played a glorious one earlier in the innings. Ben White will know in the back of his mind. And he'll be looking to do it again, hence the googly. Takes a single, 70 for four at the moment. Looking ahead, they go at the rate of eight runs for over 146, at the rate of 10, 165. We saw in the previous game, scoring 149, and then Ireland winning by 38 runs. Crucial phase in the game. How they play the next four, five overs, then look to attack in the last four to five overs, keeping wickets in hand. Strike rotation, occasional boundaries. That is the game plan at the moment between the two batters. Yeah, he's not too confident going over that onside anymore, is he? Navi's picking. Navi's reading the ball both out of the hand and off the surface. Just keep an eye on how Mohammed Navi uses his feet to access the ball. He gets a good stride in and a blade through the ball, or else he goes back, stays deep, and stays leg side. What a beautiful way to end the over. Over pitched. And he just goes straight back over the bowler's head. 78 for four. Invaluable this partnership. 
64. And a very good scoring rate. 41 of those to Mohamed Nabi. And 27 balls. 21 and 17 balls for Atal. And just keep pulling Afghanistan out of the fire. Delaney. Short. It's pulled away. Not into the gap. George Dockrell does the fielding. Brilliant stroke down the ground. He's approaching his half century, 41 of 27. Getting the inner eights. Run there. At the moment, they're thinking about not losing wicket. Somehow keep the wicket in hand. Punish the poor delivery and look to get into position from where they can go slam bang. Slam bang. <laughs> nice position to be in that one. Well, Tino, they got Karote to come, Rashid Khan to come, Ahmed Zai to come. Three batsmen with the capability of launching big missiles here. Yeah, the power play. The power play is the issue. Three of the last four T20s eyes. Afghanistan in the power play. Tino, they've lost 12 wickets in the last four power plays they've played. So definite issues there against the new rock. Yeah, that's three wickets a game in power play. If my mat serves me correct. Good for me. What school did you go to? <laughs> Harare old boys, was it? No, no, didn't school in Harare. Bulawayo, was it? Wasn't Bulawayo either. Quick, they, quick. They're not made like us in Harare and Bulawayo. <laughs> He's looked to go down the ground again. He's got a lot of height on it. And that's why he won't go into the boundary. Almost a bit of a collision there. But they'll come back for three. That was a bit of defender, slam, bam. There is no other way. Getting into this contest, they need to win this one to stay alive in the series. Just pulling back in nick of time. Almost collision there on the boundary. Yeah. That should be okay. Good bit of work on the boundary. That rate's gone up. Above seven now. Seven point. One eight. Good delivery to finish. Nice and tight. Didn't give him width to free the arms. Eight, 12 overs gone, 85 for four. Six bowlers used, what a start for Ireland with Adair and Little, 14 for four. But since then, a terrific stand, 71 in 51 balls between Nabi and Sadiq Atal. Left and right hand combination. Barry McCarthy now round the wicket to Atal. Brian, I think one of the things I love about this this rivalry between these two sides is there is very rarely a, a blowout win between the two of them, whatever the format. And there's almost always a twist and a turn. I know you could look at that third and final ODI and say, oh, that was a hammering for Ireland, the way in which they collapsed. But at 77 for one, they were in complete control of the chase to maybe square the series. Here at 14 for four, well, you were thinking, well, is this going to be a one-sided one? At, to Ireland of a series win in the palm of their hands. But there is never a game between these two sides. It doesn't go one way and then the other.
It's once again been Muhammad Nabi. We talked about it. His 89 runs of just 30 balls he did against Ireland. I said this. His best figure as a batter or against Ireland has best as a bowler or against Ireland. And today, once again, on 44 of just 31 balls, he's smashing it nicely and beautifully. Good thing is he's brought along the best of Sidi Qatar, who was looking for runs. And all of a sudden, 73 runs. This is just a wonderful recovery from Afghanistan. They've scampered one. It's really good running. The ball hasn't even made it outside the 30-yard circle. Terrific stuff from this pair. They've now added 75. This coverage brought to you by Firebird. Production going all over the world. Terrific coverage it's been to. Got that high on the bat, just the single. This partnership now 76. It's the highest fifth wicket stand in Afghanistan Island T20 internationals for Afghanistan. The previous best 63, Najibullah Zadran and Sami Shinwari. That was in Greater Noida in 2020. The Afghanistan CEO Naseeb Khan should be a happy man now, watching the game closely, along with. The ACB board member and Afghan fans, they'll be enjoying themselves. Great recovery from Afghanistan. Andrew, this very day, do you remember? I believe 16 years ago, Ireland defeated Pakistan in World Cup. And how since this cricket has changed in both parts of the world, Afghans have grown to be such a wonderful team, but Ireland what a turnaround. Yeah, I don't think there's a single Irish fan that will forget it. Mark Adair's mum on the left there. Big wave to Joanne. All the Adair's watching on back home, no doubt. Caitlin enjoying the action as well. Yeah, it was 17 years ago. That's the only thing I'll correct you on, but it was. 2007, St. Patrick's Day on it. Not too dissimilar wicket to this one. There was a tinge of green in it, Savannah Park. We'll let Niall O'Brien wax lyrical about that later, I'm sure. Did he play in that game? He's, ne he's never told me about it. I think he did. End of the 13th, 92 for four. Yeah, let's hope that that speaker's broken in the, the green room inside. Otherwise, he'll continue to go on about it. What a knock it was, joking aside from not just him, his brother as well that was out there. And really, that was the, the team that popularised the sport within Ireland and the importance of those World Cups to cricket in Ireland, it cannot be overstated. Absolutely critical to the development and growth of the game. As I spoke to Niall O'Brien a while ago about his Ireland career, and I think his debut was against Denmark. Just goes to show how far Irish cricket has come in the past two decades. Now mixing it with the big boys. Yeah, the man in the com box with a 72 to his name, Niall O'Brien. Camfer has been brought back into the attack. That's good feeling. Oh, is it out? That's really, really brilliant feeling from Camfer. Well, this is simply world-class athleticism at its very best. Curtis Camfer has delivered the ball off a 30-yard run-up. He has then sprinted 35, maybe 40 yards, got the slide in, and he's caught a tall short by a long way. That is simply sensational. One of the best pieces of fielding off your own bowling you would ever see. Wonderful stuff. No problems at all with that decision. Atal has to go, and Afghanistan lose their fifth. 93 for five.
Afghanistan, then five wickets down. With Ijaz Ahmed Zai coming in at number seven. Goodness me. The wicket that's brought him here. An absolutely exceptional piece of fielding. I just found myself sitting here and applauding as Curtis Camfer produced that piece of work. Have a look at this. And you're rightly applauding, Brian. Look at him go. It's actually ended up being collected just outside the 30-yard circle and the technique to affect this run out. That's the brilliance of it. And it's also that match awareness to know that you could be the one who needs to do that piece of fielding, just a fraction of a look up and just where the keeper wants to throw to on the bounce. Tucker knew, Camper pumped up and the Irish celebrations where we could package those alone from this tour. Quite brilliant at points here in the UAE. This is Curtis Camper, none for 12 there in the bottom right-hand corner. You can give him that wicket. Yeah, that was brilliance personified. Amazing. Andrew, you just said it. The game awareness to know which end to throw at and then spot on right on the top of off stump. Everything about that 100% right. That's what they needed out there. The partnership looked very threatening. 79 runs. Siddiq Atil, you would think that he would cut loose. But brilliant, brilliant fielding. Goodness me, he's hit that hard. Mohamed Nabi slashed it away backward a point. Takes him one shy of a half century. Oh, he's been enjoying himself no matter what's happening on the other end. Mohamed Nabi is going to hold one end. And what a shot that is. Beautiful to watch. Wait for it and slashes this beautifully. One bounce for great cricketing shot. One runs shy of his half century. Mohamed Nabi. Wait for a signal here. There's no signal, so it's the half century for Nabi. Oh, and there is a uh, leg by belated. The crowd had started to applaud the 50 there, but they've had to uh, sit down again. Well, Mohammed Nabi is so good, they'll applaud his half century twice, I suspect, tonight. They gave him the mock audition there of what would have been another T20 I 50. It would have been a third against. Ireland, but for now he'll have to wait. Remarkable to think he's only got five in his career given the quality of his batting. Yes, for Dyes mentioned that 89 he got in uh, 30 balls in Noida. 14 Don, 99 for five. Just one little number to bring your attention to at home in terms of Navi's quality. He's gone past 500 runs against Ireland in T20Is today, but his career strike rate against Ireland, averaging nearly 30, strike rate up towards 170. That's the highest of any other test nation that he plays against. Ireland know all about the brilliance of Mohamed Nabi, and he's keeping them alive in this contest. Ben White back for his last over. And Mohamed Nabi greets him by drilling him down the ground. One bounce for four, that is his 50. What a tremendous innings. Well, well, well. Mohamed Nabi, the leading run scorer for Afghanistan. And there is a reason why. Sixth T20I 50, third versus Ireland. You talk about all rounders. How about this for the stat? Among the all-rounders. Oh, what a shot that is! That's huge, Pagiza. Six runs. Back-to-back -back shots, one for the four, the other for the six. 
Muhammad Nabi is on fire. So you talk about the all-rounders. Among the all-rounders with 500 runs, 25 wickets and 25 catches, Muhammad Nabi is on the list, number eight. What an asset to have. He's joined by Paul Sterling, George Dockrell. They're playing for Ireland, they'll need to do the same. We've spoken about his uh, strike rate against Ireland. 89 of 30 balls in Greater Noida in March 17. Don't forget his innings in uh, Derudun a couple of years after that. 81 in 36 balls, also against Ireland. They're up on their feet in the dugout. Nabby's bats in the air, and he's going nicely. You might be able to hear it at home. The crowd spontaneously bursting into song of Nabi, Nabi, Nabi. It is hard to state the scale of service for his country, this man, in everything that he has done. That's sliced off the outside edge. Sterling's trying to get under it, and he does so. So Nabi, he won a couple of battles in that over, but White has won the war. And what a crucial wicket for Ireland that, because Nabi was taking the game away from them. Second time in the series that Ben White has the big wicket of Mohamed Nabi. You could see Nabi was taking a liking to him. The difference this time he came down the track. Paul Sterling judged the simple catch perfectly, but it's been a game-changing knock from Mohamed Nabi. He's gone for 59 off just 38. It's 109 for six. In at number eight, Miguelia Carote. Got a first ball duck at the hands of Ben White on Friday. What can he produce this evening? I talked to him, I said, how was that? You missed that. He said, listen, it's thing from the past. Let's focus on the new day. I like the mindset. Captain has put a slip for him. That's to put pressure. That's good captaincy from Paul Sterling. But he got him with the googly on Friday. He's bowled the googly again there. Yeah, you knew it was going to be. Let's take a look at the wicket again. Just a slightly over-ambitious stroke from Nabi. Lost his shape and white. Another one pumped up. End of the over. End of Ben White. One for 32 for him. Afghanistan 109 for six. Lots of smiles in the hospitality area, in the pavilion here at the Sharjah Cricket Ground. It's been an enthralling match so far. You simply can't take your eyes off things. A must-win game for Afghanistan, remember. And with five overs to go, Paul Sterling has decided this is the time that he's going to bowl Josh Little out from the Sharjah club end. Little getting ready for his final over. Well, that's definitely an indication that Paul Sterling will want Mark Adair to bowl those two key death overs, and I think Barry McCarthy will have to bowl the other two. 
Adair will most likely bowl 18 and 20, McCarthy 17 and 19. He's managed to scramble together four overs between Delaney and Camphrey, who've been expensive. The only surprise for me, Brian, particularly when the left-hander was in, no Harry Tector, who bowled so much in the BPL, thought he could have been a good option. Don't get me started about off-spin, because uh, I'm a big believer in Paul Sterling's off-spin, and it's just criminally underbowled, in my opinion, and has been over a number of years. He's got some wickets uh, to his uh, name. He's bowled just little, I guess. Sterling basically not used with the ball at all anymore. Part-time options are the Tector, the Camphor and, and the Dockerel. No Dockerel, just the one over, I think, in the ODIs. It's interesting, you mentioned about Mark Adair and Barry McCarthy going to bowl out the last four overs are almost certainly going to do so. There is a school of thought in 2020 international cricket that you mix it up at the death don't allow batters to get set against a particular bowler. So it's it's an interesting idea, this from uh, Paul Sterling, to go in this way. And yeah, I think the the obvious thing will be the Mark Adair 18 and 20, maybe the less obvious one, the McCarthy 17 and 19. He's somebody who works very hard in his death bowling mixing up the wide workers and then a, an out of the back of the hand slower ball Adair is happy to take that role on it's why he's been so successful sometimes hero sometimes villain by his own admission but he's very effective at the death with all of that variety maybe over 17 and 19 the two from McCarthy I think could be the ones that Afghanistan will target Oh, that has really been a great over. You will tell that breakthrough, Muhammad Nabi's wicket, how crucial that's been in this context of the game. Got some ICC representation there on the right as well, Amar Sheikh. Predominantly does an awful lot of work with the, the 95 or 96 associates from the developing part of the world. And the game continuing to grow. I know I've mentioned it a few times, Brian, that 20-team T20 World Cup come June could be game-changing for our sport. Sixteen gone. Afghanistan, 112 for six. As a look at uh, what has happened so far, Nubby outstanding with 59 off 38, so he's been uh, magnificent. Adair's back, and it's a hat trick ball. Two for eight, he's got two and two, hat trick delivery. And that's downtown. Is it going to be out? No, at six runs. Six runs off the hat trick ball. I am absolutely certain of Muds, I had no idea. Oh, you took the words out of my mouth, Hazy. I just thought, has the batter got an idea? He's sitting on a hat trick. Not at all. Dancing down the pitch and just smoking one over long on. Have a look. Hat trick, no pressure. Beautiful footwork, lovely, lovely free flow of the bat and the connection over Ben White's head at long on. That's a fine shot at the first ball. That's going to be a wide. Sigrid first at square leg. Relayed to the umpire standing. Adair's got two for 15. One ball into his third. Hello, Tino. Hello, Mike. And hello, Niall. Tino, how are you, my friend? Very well. Just to say, I know it was Hattrick ball the ball before, but I don't think that it would have uh, made much of a difference to the shot that he played. And I'm looking at the scoreboard and thinking 190 on the board. We've got four overs to go. We've given ourselves a lifeline here, so 
Let's get as many as we can in these last four. I'm looking at that magic number. Magic number 145 plus. That's the magic number. It's a lovely shot. First ball, the over off Adair. Take that. That's how you play a hat trick ball. Forget this tented orb. <laughs> Let's keep it out. Incorrect. Whack. Bosch. So only two chases out of 20 have gone past the 145 mark. Only two have been successful. When a side has got 145 or more batting first. That's adjacent. Up goes that finger. He's now got his third. He's done a wonderful job, Mark Adair. Brilliant stuff. He got two right at the top and he's come back and he's done the business again. He's just lost a shape on this one, hasn't he? It's very full and it's very straight. Would have been probably better served going straighter down the ground. Yeah, right in front of all three Adair going for the poles. Yeah, it's a good call. Good decision. Cracking, crashing into leg stump. Mark Adair, stellar once again. Full, straight accounts for Amazai. Brief, gone for nine. 119 for seven. So seven runs off this over so far. Nadir's picked up his third wicket, 3.15. Means that Rashid Khan has arrived at the middle pitch. And this is going to be quite interesting because he's someone who likes to give the ball a, a bit of tap. 106 wickets now to Adair. He is number eight on the leading wicket takers in T20 internationals. Striving for another one. Three balls left in this over. It's cracked away. Four runs. Fine shot. First up from Rashid Khan. I tell you what, there's nothing wrong with this surface. This ball slides up the surface onto the middle of Rashi Khan's blade. Have a look at this. A little bit of width, and it's the hands. Beautiful hands from Rashid Khan. What a player. First ball, thrashes one through backward point. Bit of extra bounce. Rode it nicely. Single. If he picks up another wicket, Mark Adair. He would then go to 107. He'll jump past the likes of uh, Rashid from England, Mustafa Rahman from Bangladesh, Malinga from Sri Lanka, and he'll go to number five on the list because his uh, average is going to be better. So that's the leading wicket takers in T20 internationals. There's a look at uh, the last wicket he got to take him to 106. So with a rocket, if he gets another wicket, up that all-time list. Short delivery. Call is for two. A couple of whippets out there in the middle for Afghanistan. Just the one, though. 13 off and a wicket, 125 for seven. Three overs remaining. Current rate takes him just past that 145. That magic number. If they go at nines, they get past 150. What a recovery. This is a great recovery. 59 of 38 between uh, Antal and Nobby. Eased away. Looking to come back for the second. No, not there.
So look at the chases at Sharjah as I uh, was referring to that magic number 145. 145 or more, 21 matches, 18 1 defending, only 2 1 chasing. So that's why that's so important that uh, 145, or 145 or more. 1 1 1 is what Afghanistan made in the last game, batting second. How much of these stats do you think these teams really look into, Nobby, when making their decisions at the toss? Yeah, lots, lots of in-depth knowledge and conversations from the analysts from all the sides go into the thought process. Quick single. Well, that's that was it. 145 or less. Success, 13 chases, 145 or more, only two. What if you get to that 144? How's the psychology? No chance. <laughs> I think they'll feel better because they've got as close as they can to that magical 145. I mean, they certainly should get past that uh, 154, 145 mark. Position in at the moment. She Khan is going to be uh, key. Well, just have a look at this Barry McCarthy. Yeah, cutter. Just stayed in the surface a little bit. An aggressive short ball from McCarthy, but take, took pace out of it. Not big boundaries, just 70-yard boundaries here in Sharjah. It's a top over so far. Just gone for two. Halfway through. Over number 18. 18 and 19 are two really key overs. So far, so good for McCarthy. An island, can he finish? Can they close down this? Got Karote on strike, which will be better than Rashid Khan, I'm sure. They'll be happy with him. Certainly tried to uh, invent something there. Yeah, a whole lot of stuff happened down at the batsman's end there for just a single. I think that's hit him probably on the wrist, not on the protected part of the glove. Yeah, well, just above the wrist, hey. That'll be painful. Actually, wasn't a great option from the batter. McCarthy has been taking pace off the ball, and finally was inside the ring, but deep back was square was back. So, as I mentioned previously, good strong cricket strokes. Strokes. Let's see them. Rashid Khan stays leg side. There's a big gap at deep backward point. It's hit those gloves pretty hard, and that's a wide as well on height. Well, that skipped through. And the surface probably providing for both in terms of the seamers. We saw a nice delivery that sat on the surface when he rolled the wrist down the side of the ball. This one's carried through massively. Yeah, it's a risky ball for McCarthy because Rashid Khan, as I alluded to, is so good over that point region. Regularly around the franchise circuit, you see Rashid Khan cutting the ball for six. Deep point now coming much squarer to try and protect that third inside the ring. Yeah, finally again, third man, both inside the ring. Oh, he's hit that beautifully. He's hit that nicely. That's a wonderful shot. That skimmed away. A couple of bounces, four runs. Fine blow from Rashid Khan. A great bit of cricket. Now you referred to that point being a lot squarer. So what it does is open up the gap between that point and the long off fielder but because of the length he's bowling not easy for him to be able to play the ball through extra that's why he's come down the wicket really good counteractive cricket from Rashid Khan it's called for a new bat as well I think he said well I'll get that at the end of the over we'll have one more ball with one that's cracked eight off the over so far and that's going to be a wide one-handed flick wide it is Bit flustered here, Barry McCarthy. And Rashi Khan can do that to you. Excellent from the skipper here. Nine off the over. A couple of wides in the over. Barry McCarthy trying the leg cutter. Much more difficult to get right than the off cutter. But now Rashi Khan, oh, that 134 for seven. You're looking at 150 plus now. Yeah, it didn't make much sense going for that delivery, I don't think. It's a difficult one to bowl. 
First uh, three balls went for only three. Go back to something that should do and do well. Last ball. Full toss. No look. No look. Six. What a shot. We've seen him play that before. That's a beauty from the skipper. That has gone a long way. 15 off the over. It's a big one. 18 gone. 140 for seven. Fifteen off the last over, that's the best one. I said 18 was an important over, 19 is the next one, so they're on a real roll here. Nothing wrong with that bat, he has changed it in the end. I'd stay with it. But then again, I'd look at where I'm hitting it. What a pose. And what a connection, that's gone a very long way. He knew straight away, <laughs> Rashid Khan. That's brilliant. Trademark, Rashid Khan. Brilliant. Have a look at the bowler. Over number 19, full toss. Always oh, missed a chance there, Karote. Hazy, that previous over though, from Barry McCarthy. He tried so many different things there. He was trying off cutters, leg cutters, bumper outside the awesome, slow ball bumper, then going for the Yorker. It was a poorly executed over. The planning wasn't there for McCarthy. Rashid Khan was all over him. Well, the weird thing about it is the first three balls were good, and then suddenly it went uh, pear-shaped. It was a long over with a wide as well, two wides. Karote missed out on that full toss. That's a little bit leg side, he's whipped that away, that's out of the screws, and that's superbly fielded. Tag team work again, good stuff from Ireland. He's moved well, Gareth Delaney, because this has come out the screws. It's gone quickly. Probably just lost some space, actually, when it bounced in the outfield, and that helped him. And he's gone tearing across to the right side. That's a great bit of work from Delaney. Yeah, but the end result was good. Rashid back on strike. And just listen to the crowd. They're going to get up again here. The partnership 22 off 13 now. Just the single taken. Rashid Khan on strike. Oh, that's a high full toss. Is that going to be over the waist height? It's gone for four. Ireland are not getting this right to Rashid Khan. Is that too high? I think it is. Rashid Khan is not happy about the decision that was made. Looked like he might have advanced, advanced down the wicket as well. So that might just complicate the situation. But I thought... That was quite high. Let's have a look. Slower ball, yeah. Does dip. Normal stand. I reckon it's probably just about okay. I reckon normal standing position. I'm calling that a no ball, actually. That should have been called a no ball in my book. Above waist height, standing upright in the crease. If he was wearing a belt, it would have been above the belt. That's how I like to think of things. Wasn't much in it. We saw one in the ODIs. Went for six off the last ball. The innings that should have been called it was like chest height. Paul Rifle and his partner that they didn't call it. That was, oh, I don't know, it's close. Got that 145. Just going to be one. Karate wanted two, but not there. He's asking about that uh, no ball now. I think he got a bit of a signal from the uh, dugout, actually. Yeah, there we go. There's a signal. I think he's well within his rights. Rashid Khan. Well, I don't think he should be asking the umpire at all. The umpire's made the decision. Can it go on with the game? Let's have another look. Above waist height. Is it above waist height? Sure is. Last ball. Very good delivery to finish his spell as well. Three for 27. 
19 gone, six off that, 146 for seven. One over remaining now. It's going to be McCarthy who's going to be bowling it. None for 27 for him. Adair, three for 27, outstanding. Little, magnificent, two for 20. White, one for 32, got that wicket late. They were in total control when they were four for 14. Then there was a partnership. Now they're going to get 150. 150 plus they're going to get. 21 off eight for Rashid Khan. A game this is going to be. Let's look at the fall of wickets. Outside the line of off stump. Shake of the head from the umpire. Who was that? No look shot again, Hazy, that you love? That was the no look, and just have a quick look at the umpire. Amazing, there's no backlift. Just trying to flip it because he knows. The two men are inside the ring behind square leg and an absolute no interest in running a single either. He just says to the youngster, Karote, I'll just take the strike. You just admire me at work. Fine leg is very fine, actually. He's inside the circle. Third man is also fine inside the circle. Crack that. And he's found a gap. No, he hasn't. Brilliantly fielded. That is top work. Nicely done, two more. What a recovery from Afghanistan, led by Nabi. 14 for four at one stage. And now, with four boys to go in the innings, 160 very possible. It's right in his arc, that one too. Dockerel was uh, outstanding. Having to cover some ground and then tidy up beautifully. She's there fielded well, Ireland, in the two games. Diving on everything, taking their catches, Camphers run out. Change of line now, Dockrell's come off the fence and square leg has gone to deep backward square leg. So he's going to bowl straighter, that's uh, fraught with danger, surely. Leg side, Rashid Khan. No, it's gone shorter and he's gone over the top. No, he hasn't. Oh, just has. Just has. Going to come back for two. Yeah, Curtis Camphers. The man he just mentioned, Hazy, had come inside the ring. Risky bowling this, because we know how good Rashid is. Flaying the ball, it's another slower ball, it's right there for Rashid, he'll be gutted. That was in his wheelhouse just to carve away for a boundary. 150 up with those couple of runs. Three balls remain in the innings. Can they get past that 160 mark? Tactics, changing the pace, taking the pace off to Rashid Khan. You've just got to make sure you don't become predictable. You change it up again, so the field has gone back to what it was when pace was on the previous delivery. Three balls left in the innings. Oh, that's... Uh, now, has that hit the cut surface? If that hasn't hit the cut surface, and here's the question here, that should be a no ball if it hasn't hit the cut surface which is the area that they designate as the, as the pitch. And this is Curtis Camphor who is chasing to try and catch the ball. Yeah, you can just see Byron McCarthy, he had no complaints. Obviously, I was with you, Hazy. I was my first concern for Ireland and Byron McCarthy did it get on the surface, because if not, obviously the determination is a free hit. Umpire just say, just about have a look. Yeah, just about. Yeah, it's okay. So it's a wide only. Terrible ball, mind you. Yeah, shocker. Now that's gone over. Short third man, he's taken a fine catch. Adair, very well judged. That is a very, very good catch. An important catch as well. Yeah, he's made it look a lot simpler than it was. Didn't panic. And he would have had running back in his peripheral vision the fielder coming in from third man, but he stayed very calm. And he completed a very good catch. 
Yeah, it was a wide line again. It's the helicopter from Rashid Khan. And as you mentioned, Tino, Curtis Camfer was just out of shot. Really good pair of hands, Mark there. Excellent from Rashid Khan. That's a top knock, 25 from 12, 150, 148. Two balls left in the innings. Eight down. Naveen Haq. he likes having a bit of a dip as well, and he's headed straight to the man, just in front of points. Doc Willis has taken the catch, and that's another wicket. Well, how easily this could have gone for six. 50th wicket in T20 internationals. Got the man in the perfect position on that point boundary. He goes for none. One five one for nine. We've got one ball left in the innings now. McCarthy's on a hat-trick. Here's a look at uh, two wickets. Good catch, that one from Adair. That's the first. The second one was caught by Dockrell. And this is the hat-trick ball. Oh, and he's dug it out just. See, we've had a lot of bowlers on hat-tricks in this series. Very, very nicely bowled, McCarthy. Pitted up with uh, two for 33. Afghanistan have got 152 for nine. It's only the seventh time in T20 international history that a side has scored 150 or more after losing four wickets in the first four overs of an innings. What a recovery this is. This is a target. Yeah, outstanding. Hats off to the Afghanistan batsman. Mohammed Nabi in particular in that middle part of the innings and that massive partnership. 60 plus they can afford to smile Afghanistan first four overs you wouldn't have seen much of that what a recovery yeah it's a job really well done by the men in blue experience came to the fore first in Nabi then in Rashid Khan Ireland they'll be a little bit dejected coming off the field after such a good start but a much better pitch for this second D20 to look at uh, what happened to Afghanistan too. they're in so much trouble with 14 on the board and four wickets down then there was a stand 93 for five there were and Navi was the star with 59 of 38 and Rashid superb with his 25 of just a dozen to get just past that 150 mark yeah the bowlers started really well a day outstanding once again three for him two for little and two for McCarthy as well right I Let's go downstairs now. Andrew Leonard has uh, got someone who's going to be pretty pleased with his performance. Yeah, one of the stars of the show with the ball for Ireland, Josh Little, four overs, two for 20. Talk me through your bowling spell. Yeah, um, I've been working closely with Ryan Eagleton, the bowling coach, in the last few weeks, just about shaping the ball back in. Um, went through a period there recently where I sort of lost my ability to shape it back in, so it's nice to see a couple sort of hooping back in as a left armer should. Didn't look to me just to be hooping back in. You got a few to go away as well. Is that something you've also been working on? Yeah, I think um, the best bowlers in the world can swing it both ways. So um, just practicing that as well. That's actually the first time I've really bowled it in a game. Um, but uh, yeah, it's coming out nice. You look to be loving playing for Ireland at the moment. We saw the passionate celebrations in those career best ODI figures, six for 36 down in Harare. And now after a little bit of a, a break, rejuvenated, fired up, potential of a series victory here. 
Yeah, 100%. I think uh, every time I put on this shirt, I absolutely love it. Um, it's just about balancing um, the cricket I do have, and that is quite a lot at the moment. Um, but playing for my country is something that I'll always be very proud of. Um, but yeah, celebrations sort of just come naturally. The passion of we wearing, the, wearing the badge just comes naturally to me. Well, I think Irish fans are delighted to see you in green. Very well bowled, Josh. Best of luck in the second innings. Thank you, Lenny. Andrew and Josh. Josh picked up uh, two for 20 off four overs and showed some really good skill. That's the story. They've got some batting to do now. Ireland they need 153 off 20 overs. A total that's not reached very often here at uh, Shahzah. They need to go at 7.65 runs per over. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back shortly with some highlights. Welcome back. Now we're just going to uh, have a look at uh, what has happened so far. This has been a fascinating game. And it needs to be a fine game from Ireland for the second half as well. As we look at Afghanistan, they're in all sorts of trouble at the top. Look at that. Kavar, Zibrahan, Ishak, and Mazai. Not many runs amongst them. In fact, just eight amongst those four. Nabi played superbly for 59 off 38. And Rashid, 25 off for a dozen balls. 152 for nine. So that was superb. 
Yeah, six bowlers used for Ireland. And once again, the top two, Mark Adair and Josh Little, were outstanding. 25 doubles between those two and sharing five wickets. McCarthy cleaned up nicely the back end. Expensive spin today. Credit Afghanistan. They're ultra aggressive against Ben White and Gareth Laney. Pretty well played, though, by the top two. Yeah, at one stage, they uh, weren't going to get 100, I think. And then uh, it was Nobby who played brilliantly. Let's look at some of the highlights. That was the first wicket to go, Josh Little. What an unbelievable delivery. And that's Kabaz, six on the board when he was departed. The Brand Zudrin was uh, well caught. Fine catch taken by White, 11 for two. Ishak, LBW given out up on that finger. And Adair was in the game well and truly. He wasn't finished. Next ball, caught behind. So that was a Mazai, 14 for four at this stage, and they needed to get some runs, and Nabi arrived. Yeah, he played so well, Mohamed Nabi. He played nicely in the first T20 I as well. Good, strong, quicker shots, powerfully hit, got good support from the south ball. That was a beautiful, clean swing of the blade. Just have a look at where Nabi's hitting the ball, giving full face, hitting through the line. This is beautiful. Atal, he's got some real talent. I like that, straight down the ground. Here in Sharjah, that's where you want to hit it. Nabi played so, so well, using all his experience. This was a brilliant bit of work from Curtis Camper, off his own bowling, chase, slide, bullet throw. Good enough for his man. Yeah, that was outstanding, really was. Broke a very important partnership. Nabi uh, wanted to continue, and uh, that was his 50, so fine performance from him. He's done a wonderful job with the bat and ball as well in this series. He hit that out of the screws. Then he decided to go down the ground, try and get to the pitch, didn't need to. Sliced it away and was caught by Sterling, so White was a little bit uh, happier after that. And there were still some runs to come, right at the end. That was LBW, Adair back in the attack, so uh, that's six runs off his hat-trick ball. And then he picked him up later in the over, and uh, it was all about the skipper. Oh, she can't, no look, no look, little hook, beautiful shot. It should have been called a uh, no ball, it wasn't, but it did go for four. And he hit that one nice and high, doubling back. It was a very good catch by Mark Adair. So he was in the game well and truly. That was a good catch by Dockrell. Could have gone for six, it's just a little bit high. It was a bit disappointing, it was the first ball that uh, that was slapped to that region. But in the end, they got to, to 152. So 153 is required by Ireland. Remember, Ireland won the first game, so Afghanistan are very keen to win this one. Ireland need to go at 7.65 runs and over. And if Ireland do get up, of course, it's going to be one all. So this is going to be fascinating, the second half of today. We're going to take a break. We'll be back shortly, and then we'll have the action.
Well, here we are, the second T20i, all set up to be another cracker between these two great old rivals. It's Afghanistan versus Ireland, live from the Charger Cricket Stadium. Well, some beautiful shots there of Afghanistan, of course. The hosts of this series, although we're on Emirati soil here in Sharjah. And that was the tail of the tape in the first innings. Uh, really absorbing first innings between the two sides. Ireland were all over Afghanistan with the new ball. Josh Little and Mark Adair outstanding, reducing Afghanistan to 14 for four. But then the fight back led by Mohamed Nabi and Sadiq Atal with his best in T20i cricket before a flourish from Rashid Khan at the end. And that has given Ireland the target of 153 to win, not just the second T20i, but take an unassailable 2-0 lead in the series. A special night for this man, Andrew Balburney, becoming just the fourth Irishman to play 100 T20 internationals, the 27th in total across the world of the game. And he's out there with his great old pal, his former housemate. They used to live together in London, these two, when they played for Middlesex. Andrew Balburney and Paul Sterling, they know each other's game very, very well, but they will have a tall task facing up against the quality of the likes of Fazal Haq Farooqi and Naveen Al Haq with the new ball, and then the brilliance of Afghan. The brilliance of Afghanistan spinners too. We're all set for the chase, here we go. Pitches outside leg to start. I've got Tino Moeo and Ahmed Fadai alongside. I'm going to start with you, Tino. Where do you see this contest at right now? Well, I'll have to say at the halfway stage, it's advantage Afghanistan. I think 150-plus uh, here is very difficult to chase, and we've spoken about this all the way through the two T20s that we've played. And I think this man could be key. Fazalak Faruqi has been very good with ball in hand. We saw his opposite left armour. Josh Little get the ball to swing. I would expect that he'll get the ball to swing as well. And the first runs go to the man playing his 100th. T20i was presented with a ceremonial cap to mark the occasion. Ahmed, um, do you tend to agree with what Tino's just said? Afghanistan on top. Are we going to see a squared series and a decider tomorrow? Uh, I think this is what... Uh, should be expected. We want to see the square being uh, the, the series being squared. The fans want that, and we know that 145 plus have only been chased a couple of times. Unfortunately, once it was against Afghanistan. Sri Lanka did that. So can Ireland pull this off? They will very much want that. They want to just seal the series. Do you think it's a better? pitch potentially than what we played on a couple of days ago it's a fresh pitch of course and just the four have got to that century landmark and three of them still playing Kevin O'Brien well he's in action actually over in Sri Lanka one of those legends league tournaments that goes around he's actually watching on enjoying the action from Sri Lanka so big shout out to King Kevin O'Brien four great players he's always watching isn't he Kev wonderful player of course over the years for Island cricket. Sublime from Paul Sterling. Stupendous, in fact. He's as good as anyone through the offside. He's hit more fours than anyone in T20i cricket. You can see why. Make that 402 fours. I talked to him earlier, uncharacteristic. I should have hit more sixes than fours. <laughs> but he's a great crack character. Leading from the front, what a shot! All I can do is shake my head when I look at that replay. Wow! It really is 
is something special about Paul Sterling's ball striking through that offside in particular. Some sides have become wise to it. They've started to pack offside fields against him. But look at the calibre of the players that he's mixing it with here. Hasn't played that many more times than the likes of Babar Azam or Virat Kohli or Rohit Sharma. And he's got more fours than anyone. And plenty of sixes to go with it too. The first six overs here, how important are they given the, the quality of Faruqi in particular? We'll come to that. Let's just have a look at this again. Beautiful from Sterling. Yeah, it goes without saying. Very, very important that first six overs. And we've seen Faruqi strike. So, in my opinion, it won't kill Ireland just to maybe not totally get after him. What you don't want is early wickets like Afghanistan lost. You know the striking ability of this bowler, and we've seen it in the white ball matches. Don't give him an opening. Round the wicket for the final ball of the first over. It's a good sign for Ireland. means that the early movement from the new ball might not quite be there for Afghanistan. Five for none. One of the challenges for Ireland, Ahmed, will be the fact that Rashid Khan and Karote's eight overs took five for 35 the other night. They're not going to necessarily get big runs off the spinners. Faruqi, and then the main man himself, Rashid Khan, his 24 deliveries this evening. Well, they could go a huge way to dictating the fates of this contest and indeed the series. Well, that's going to be four. May well be leg buys will await the signal. And it is given. That's like delay as four leg buys. Not the right line from Naveen Ulhak. Yeah, not the right line. He's gone a little bit wide at the crease. And his wrist has just angled down the leg side. And that's why it's just kept going. Have a look at that. He's well outside the line of the stumps. Mohammed Nabi goes into a catching mid-wicket. Well, not so much catching from slip. Just going to be a single picked up on the the bounce. Surprised to see Naveen Alhak go for 52, given the, the brilliant form he was in in the PSL recently. Well, yeah, absolutely. He's got really good cutters, slower balls, disguises them nicely. Sometimes you can have a bad day out in the field, but look at this for the fielding. Ijaz Ahmad Zai, really brilliant work. Yeah. It's important that you also, as the pace uh, frontline attack of Afghanistan, ball into the right areas yes Rashid Khan can be the telling factor but the platform the foundation have to be set inside the power play overs by the two pacers Fazal Haq Farooqi and Naveen Ul Haq good call from Balberni will get his partner through for the single nine wickets in just six appearances for the Peshwar Zalmi in the PSL Eight of these players from Afghanistan in the IPL reckoning that'll get going next week. It shows the caliber of opposition Ireland are facing here, Tina. Well, absolutely. And you'll find, moving from red ball cricket to white ball cricket, they had about 10 changes to the squad. So that just bodes well for them in terms of the pool of players that they've got at international level. Not many international teams, including the top ones, can swap 10 players from a red ball format to a white ball format. You're talking about PSL. Every game that Naveen Ulhaq played in for Peshawar Zalmi, Peshawar Zalmi won. 
and every game that he didn't play in, I believe Peshawar Zalmi couldn't win. So he brought good omen at least and also performed really nicely in the PSL. Talking about these leagues, and you earlier talked about Kevin O'Brien, how about those five sixes in an over and one four? That was outstanding. That won't be given as a wide because Balberni has come so far across, even though it's missed the leg stump. Yeah, they call him King Kev for a reason. Back in Ireland. Just a sense that maybe after some initial struggles trying to replace O'Brien at the top of the order, these two starting to come into their own a touch. And then you add the continuing maturity of Lorcan Tucker and Harry Tector. Ireland have some good options with the bat at the top of the order. Well, that one leg by, barring that, he's come back strongly, Naveen Ulhaq, in this over. He just has to finish it strong. The two dots, can they make an impact and get the breakthrough? Maybe just a fingertip. Really athletic effort from Atal at cover point, but he can't rein it in. It's a boundary 10, the second, 15 for none. There is that depth you were just talking about, Tino, Tucker and Tector, Camper in a different role in this format at five, and then a big boost for Ireland getting George Dockrell back. And was there a fingertip at cover point here? Just come back for two. If there was a fingertip, that fingertip might have gone with the ball. That's how hard he hit it. Andy Balboni. We'll have to see. Sidi Qatal is tall. Yeah. Yeah, there was. Could have been a blinder. That was my initial instinct. Just something on it. I don't think you can call it a drop catch. I've got my notebook out here saying, oh, it's not going into it. That would have been run saved if he'd managed to somehow claw that back. Ireland are almost playing a balancing act here, aren't they, here in this first power play there? Acutely aware that the runs aren't going to come easily later in the innings off the spinners, but they don't want to lose wickets in the power play either. What would they like to be off this power play in terms of runs? Now they want to make sure they at least have 115. Crowds come out and their numbers to enjoy this T20 format in particular. What wonderful scenes. Great support for Afghanistan and Sharjah. Forty for none after six. Is that enough? That would leave you 110 off 14. Back to the mats. I love them. Yeah, I mean, uh, play it safe. Keep your wickets intact and you never know like even in the previous match it was at one point looking really horrible for Afghanistan but they only needed 50 or 50 odd runs in 30 deliveries yeah Niall spoke earlier about starting strong and finishing strong now Afghanistan didn't do that in their power play today 4 for 14 at one stage but they did finish pretty strong 43 in the last five. Managed 58 in the last five in the first game. Going back to that first game. They were 48 for one. Ireland in that first power play phase. They'll be very happy if they can achieve that today. Wickets in hand, I think we've seen are an advantage. Here at Charger. Pulled into the deep man out there, over his head. 
into the stands. Not quite sure it was fully in control from Balberni, but it's a maximum to really get that scoreboard moving in this power play. Well, he's celebrating his hundredth presence. What a shot that. Make it to his tally of sixes. He's hit 62nd of his sixes that he's hit in the T20 International. What a shot that. Andy Balberni just takes him on. I think Afghanistan Pacers have not found as much of a C movement as much Josh Little earlier on got. Yeah, Josh definitely got the ball to swing around both ways. And Fazalak Faruqi, if anybody in the Afghanistan side was going to get swing, it would be him. I haven't seen that today. And that's why he's continuing to vary his angle of attack over and there around the wicket. Siddiqulla Talat was out at behind square, not a fine leg, he's kind of a deep backwards square. I'm certain that Balberni didn't get that out of the middle, he was rushed a bit for pace, but got enough to the larger side of the ground. We come across two pitches, so it's a bigger hit out towards the road. Ireland halfway towards that total of the mid-40s that they'd love to be at the end of the power play. Good position, good start. Man out there, and he's completely misjudged it. It's Asmatullah Ormitz, so I think it could have been a chance. Was he right on the rope? Instead, it's the second maximum of the over. Ireland, 29 for none. Asmatul Ormitsai is going to come into the attack. He very nearly had the chance to affect the first wicket out at a deep backward point. Was this misjudgment or was it always going to go for six? Get a look after this delivery. And the aggression continues from Ireland. Sterling into the act now. He gets to double figures controlled the way Ireland have gone about this early part of their chase this is short and very easy to put away on a placid surface 10.42 to the over this is the current run rate they only need three and that's why Rashid Khan's having a word with his bowler he realizes this could very easily get out of hand well, Ireland have done their homework. Look at this. In the previous over, he went for that. You'll think maybe it was the misjudgment. Yeah, Omar Zai was way inside. Had he been on the ropes. What a shot that is. Paul Sterling. That is beautiful. Oh, he said sublime. This time, maybe stupendous, Tino Maweo, former opening batter yourself. How difficult is it to hit it with this quality? Well, how difficult is it, I think, when you don't quite have your ball to... your foot to the pitch of the ball. But what he does so well is he waits for the ball and he hits it under his eyes. His contact point is so good. Runs are flowing for Ireland. Last six deliveries. There's been five boundaries, two of the maximums, and Balberni and Sterling are putting Ireland into a very confident, very strong position here. Ormazai under pressure. Got a bit of shape away from the right-hander, but he's just used that with Paul Sterling. This one doesn't come out the middle like the previous one, but it finds the gap. But you got a ball wicket to wicket. See, that's the thing. Let them play high-risk shots. But if you give so much width on offer, Paul Sterling is going to cash it out big time. Big appeal. And the umpire is indicating bad involved. There was two noises. Was this pad? Pad would be my question. Shuff Sterling had certainly shuffled across his stump somewhat. Big appeal. Afghanistan in desperation, needing a wicket. 
Yeah, there definitely were two sounds. For me, inside edge is what I thought when I first saw it. Take a closer look here. He's missed it. He's missed it. But when you look at that first angle, I don't think it was hitting the stumps either. Two noises that we all heard here, I think may have been actually sort of the flap of the pad and then going up onto the, the trouser of the thigh pad of Paul Sterling. But I think you're right. I think a fair call in terms of it may be at best clipping leg stump. Better line and length this time. Afghanistan look rattled out there. Yeah, absolutely. They, they, they have to bowl in the proper line in length. The last two deliveries have been spot on, disguised onto the pads. Previous delivery, this one once again onto the wickets. This is good bowling. You have to finish it well. It's already been 13 runs off this over. Sterling says he wants two, but Balberni says no. Good piece of fielding from Gerbaz in the deep, but Ireland off to a flying start. It's 43 for none. Naveen ul -Hak. He was harshly dealt with in the first T20 International on Friday, so it's uh, very important from his perspective that he bounces back. Still no sign of that man. He usually bowls outside the power play, Rashid Khan. But he'll know his side are under real pressure now. The required rate is less than seven. What a great start by Balburnie and Sterling. Devendra Kumar alongside me. Very good start, Brian, from Sterling and Balberni, two of the closest friends you'll get in Irish colours. Contemplate this power play just being ultra aggressive. I watch a lot of cricket at this ground and franchise cricket. The power play is so important. Paul Sterling has crashed so many balls through that offside. In his whole career, you think 15 years, the amount of boundaries, we saw that stat earlier of the boundaries in T20 cricket for Paul Sterling. And I reckon, Murgers, 50 to 60% of those boundaries, the fours I'm talking, were crashed and thrashed through the offside. Afghanistan haven't got it right tonight. They've given them too much width. Also the length, Niall, too short at times, not pitching in that good length area. One bowler who I've seen bowl superbly, I'm talking right arm seamers, I'm not talking left arm, that's somewhere, something that has troubled Paul Sterling in his career a little bit, he's got a lot better the last two or three years against left armers. One bowler that has had Paul Sterling in a lot of trouble, Alfonso Thomas. Seamer, skiddy bowler, and he used to say, I'm going to try and hit Paul Sterling on the inside of the back thigh, that was his target area, so you can imagine, angle the ball in and nip the ball back onto that middle and leg stump. Just like that, and you can see Sterling operating there with Naveen ul -Hak bringing the ball back into the right-hander with a very open stance. Yeah, the open stance is to get access to the ball so he can hit that ball through the cover, through the backward point region. Here's that stance you're talking about. Look at that left foot right out of the way. That's so poor Sterling, because you get access to the ball. 
Doesn't hit that much down the ground through mid-off. A ball that a lot of batters will hit to mid-off. Paul Sterling will crash through cover. And maybe a little bit of a backward point. End of the over. Very steady over that from Naveen Ul Haq. Just two runs from it. Ireland 45 without loss. Trial by spin for Ireland this evening with Rashid Khan, Karote and Nabi all in the side. And it's going to be Karote who's going to get the first twist from the Sharjah club end. He's been brilliant. The white ball match that he played in the first game as well with ball in hand. Two for 16 from the previous game. In Afghanistan will expect wickets from him. Yeah, 15 dot balls he bowled in uh, that last game. Look at the offside field there as well. Five fielders inside the ring. So Sterling's response is to go over the top and find the boundary at extra cover. Well, I must say, Afghanistan's plans are totally off against Paul Sterling. Sterling loves hitting the ball through and over the offside. Our fine men behind the cameras gave us the offside field before a ball was bowled, and that was just like, well, taking candy from a baby for Paul Sterling. He would have been licking his lips. All the offside up, thank you very much. Change of field, long off goes back. Long off goes back, he can't go through the offside. Karate! Celebration time for Afghanistan. The partnership has been broken finally. It's Karate from Baglan. Striking for Afghanistan. Making a change in the field, depositing the fieldsmen on the boundary. Forcing the batsman to do something different. Quick delivery, flat delivery, attacking the stumps. Skidding off the surface, bit of turn and middle stump. Rattled, Rashid Khan is delighted. Afghanistan finding the breakthrough. Sterling, the danger man goes for 24. 49 for one, Ireland. Lorcan Tucker in at number three. He struggled in game one on Friday, made four in 13 balls before Karote dismissed him. Slip in. And that brings up the 50 for Ireland, still inside the power play. Let's have a look at the bowling, nice from Karote. Oh, a little bit of turn, the angle, Paul Sterling be a little bit disappointed. Previous ball, he crashed over mid-off, and Karote pushed the man back, and Sterling just went a little bit different in his approach and was undone by a beauty. Interesting to see that long off back for the first delivery for Tucker. I always like to see the fielder inside the circle for a new batter. I know it's not necessarily the, the style these days. Stifle the peel, delivered wide on the crease and just flicked the pad. Pretty sure it's just off the pad. Balberni on the sweep, he's a good sweeper, Andrew Balberni.
Sliding down leg side just. So it was closer than first thought that single. Six overs done. Power play over. 51 for one. Power play done and dusted then. And this is the highest score in the power play in this series thus far. Afghanistan with 32 for four a little earlier. And in game one, Afghanistan 43 for three when they were chasing after Ireland made 48 for one. Rashid Khan, as soon as the power play's over, as is usually the case, he comes straight into the attack. Wasn't he terrific on Friday in his comeback? after back surgery four overs three for 19. a vital wicket from afghanistan perspective from karote they expect similar kind of things from rashid khan you just keep an eye on that run rate murgers keep an eye on the Required rate 7.37. Just watch now as Rashid goes through the gears and pushes that rate up. Google the second one, hitting the right length straight away. His spell is going to be crucial. Also, Nabi's spell. How three spinners bowl for Afghanistan? That's the googly on the next time. That will determine the course of the match. Yeah, and the big plus point, not just Rashid Khan's bowling in the first game, was his recovery. First game he'd played in a long time after a, a serious back injury. And speaking to him before the game, a little bit of improvisation gets it nice and fine and might just trickle away. The outfield is quick, good work. Good save in the deep. They need that Afghanistan, that's good. Good energy from Siddiqui They're on the boundary, the tall man, the opener for Afghanistan. There he is. Putting in a diving effort. Brilliant. One thing we've seen so far this evening is there's been no dew there's no sign of any rags being brought out it's good it means a good even contest between bat and ball in this second innings <laughs> miss that and you're in trouble Andrew Balburnie kept a little bit low but he kept his eye on the ball did well in the end. Just keeping an eye on the fielder at first slip. Well, he's out now. I was just going to say, I think it's Muhammad Nabi. He was standing so fine. He was almost hiding behind the wicket keeper. Now he's brought out to that catchy mid wicket. Single down the ground, seven overs gone, 57 for one. Ireland's 50 coming up in 5.3 overs. There's been only one faster team 50 in a chase here at Sharjah. England brought up their 50 in five overs against South Africa in 2021 in the World Cup, but they still lost. They were chasing 190 and lost by 10. 
Top edge. Faisal Hak Faruqi is just over his head. Lorcan Tucker improvising again. Suffering across, getting the top edge. Faruqi, the fieldsman there, late realization from him. Was always going to away from him, landing away from him on that occasion. Once two, Lorcan Tucker. Balburn is not going to make it back. Even with the misfield, Andrew Balburn, not as sprightly as he once was, but Lorcan Tucker just loves sweeping the ball. At every opportunity, Lorcan Tucker, the Isle of Wicket keeper, looks to get down and sweep. Saw him dismissed a couple of days ago of the toe of the bat, straight to mid wicket. This time, Balburn wants to, and Tucker says no. I've said it before today, and I said it before the first game. It's not the kind of surface that you get huge value by sweeping too fine. We've seen batters slog sweep the ball well because it gives you more margin for error when the ball's a little bit low. Single down the ground again into second over, one for 11. Got men at the boundary at mid, mid wicket on the boundary, deep mid wicket. Long on, men at the backward, backward uh, square leg on the on side. <laughs> Up in the air. He's going away towards the boundary. Tickles into the boundary for four. It's nowhere near off the middle of the bat, that, but with fine leg up in the circle. Fortune favouring the brave for Balburnie. He gets just enough elevation. Fazelhack has been in the chase a couple of times. It's over. Fancy it. Skips away off the surface. Dot to finish the eighth over. 66 for one. Pretty well controlled this by Ireland, 66 for one now. Eight overs gone, they did so well in the uh, power play, 51 for one. That set them up nicer, yes, they would have loved Sterling still to be there, but now's the tough call, Rashid. A couple of deliveries from him have uh, kept a bit low. That was the Rogan. we know he'll bowl a good percentage of Roggins. He's got that slider as well, he'll put that in there too with this ball keeping low. Fadai, Tino. Hello, boys. Yeah, I mean, uh, Ireland is really uh, in a comfortable position from here. They've done nicely. They negotiated the power play nicely. They've been batting really nicely with the intent. Scoring at eight runs in a buff per over. Required run is under eight, so that's good. And they're keeping an eye as to who they want to target among the bowlers. It's really a well-planned chase so far. got themselves in a situation where they don't have to take uh, great chances against Rashid Khan. They can just work him around and maybe think of four or five and over. And then if you happen th they happen to get the odd loose ball, they can put him away. But they don't have to take any chances against him because they're ahead of the game at this stage. In the air, opportunity gone. Lorcan Tucker. Dismissed playing a similar stroke in the first T20. That time he got a leading edge and he was caught at mid-wicket. This time a lot more bat on it. Goes straight to the fielder at 45. They lose their second. Well, well, well. Fazal Haq Farooqi takes the catch. Bit of nerves when the ball goes to him. But he's done nicely. He had a practice earlier on and that has paid off. Lorcan Tucker departs making 10. Afghanistan take the second. Ireland or 68 for two.
68 for two. They took a risk against Rashid Khan. Wicket's gone. You've got uh, him in the game now. Harry Taktu, who played so beautifully a couple of nights ago, has got some work to do. Now, he'll play him straight down the ground. He won't look to play the sweep shots against him. That's exactly how you don't play against him. What a delivery that is. That is magnificent. That is absolutely outstanding. That's one of the finest wrong-uns you will ever, ever see. Magic stuff from Rashid Khan. Remember the name, Rashid Khan. The Rashid Khan foxes Harry Tector, one of the best informed players of Ireland throughout the series. But what a peach of a wrong one this is. Rashid Khan goes through the gat, and that is a splendid, splendid breakthrough for Afghanistan. Rashid Khan enjoys it. Afghanistan fans love this. Harry Tector departs without trouble in the scorers. Golden duck for him. Ireland are 68 for three. Skipper's on a hat-trick now, Rashid Khan. Curtis Kampfer arrives at number five. What a delivery this is. That's the one before. Lorcan Tucker, and what a beauty. You won't get a delivery much better than that from a leg spinner. And it brings Curtis Kampfer to the middle. 50th T20 international wicket in the UAE for Rashid Khan. 101 T20 wickets in the UAE full stop. Unbelievable stuff. Hat-trick ball. Another bowler on a hat-trick. Second time again in the previous T20. He's already got one against Ireland. Now figures were five for three. Watch out for that wrong one. Or the slider is crowded. Oh, does the wrong one. The wrong one again. Very nicely bowled too. What an over that was. Two wickets. Only two runs. Rashid Khan, you beauty. 68 for three. Afghanistan have made a good comeback into this game. Ireland still need another 85 runs in the next 11 overs. Rashid Khan is in some wonderful form. He's got two wickets. Well and truly in the game of the bat before Mohammed Nabi. 59 of 38 deliveries involved in a partnership of 79. He's a magnificent bowler as well. Perfect time for him to come into the game with the ball. Another man that Ireland need to look out for. For Misley Mohammed Nabi. Outstanding with the bat. Pulled his team out of the mud. Now he's got an opportunity to do that with the ball. Just takes a couple of tight overs and a couple of wickets to change the perspective of this game. Getting a bit of turn out of this track now. 83 runs, 64 balls, seven wickets in hand. Two overs from Rashid Khan. What a peach, what a jaffa. Harry Tector. He's a brilliant batter. Muhammad Nabi, on the other hand, is getting some turn. He's got the best figures against Ireland, 4 for 10. You could just see, actually, uh, Rashid Khan's uh, reaction when he got that uh, wicket with a wrong and how special he thought it was. He was right, it was magnificent. Backing away. And Harry Tector is human after all. 
And how about Rashi, a bit of a superhuman there? Well, he played magnificently in the uh, first T20. It's beautifully bowled again, nice and flat. That was a very wide throw. Good work from Ishaq. Ishaq Rahimi keeping the wickets. Previous over went for only two. A couple of wickets falling in it. And this one has uh, gone for five. That's all. It's a good throw. It's amazing what a couple of wickets and a quiet over do. Ten overs gone. We're in the halfway stage, 73 for three. There's a look at the uh, the graphs at the moment. Ten overs uh, gone, 73 for three. They've just taken a little bit of a uh, sideways dip at the moment, Ireland. 80 runs required off 60 balls, seven wickets in hand. Let's have a look at the wickets that have gone down. Yeah, after a really good start, it looked good. Could have wanted him to go on a lot more. It took a peach of a delivery to dismiss him, Paul Sterling. Lorcan and Tucker, very similar to the way he departed a couple of evenings ago and a magical delivery from Rashid Khan to get rid of Harry Tekta. Look at that bowling card, look at the spinners. So karote has got uh, two overs to go, Rashid's got two and Nabi's got three. So there's seven overs and there's ten to be bowled. And you would think that Nabi will continue. And then a couple of uh, overs from Seamers. But the spinners are going to be tough from here. Rashid Khan again. Because what they need to go is they need to go at over eight runs and over at the moment. When Rashid continues, he wants to go for the kill. Believes that there's already pressure on the Irish batters, so why not try and just exert extra pressure? If Rashid takes one more wicket here, Andy Balbini in particular, put a lot of pressure on Ireland. So camp front strike now. Slip in position. Balburnie's uh, one of those guys who's not necessarily a big hitter, so that's something that won't worry them too much. That's a nice little paddle. Chases on. It's nicely fielded. Oh, they wanted to come back for the third. Couldn't get there, just two. Very good fielding. Saved two runs. How often does that happen? It's a good thing he didn't go into the boundary wedges because he definitely would have been in contact with the ball. Great job done in the end. 
wonder how much they practice that because it, it's, it's a very nice uh, delivery. It's something you see a lot with sort of a stare there from Rashid Khan as well. It's falling through <laughs> almost all the way down to the batsman. That's brilliant work, second time. Sadiq Adal saving a certain boundary, bringing back to my point about Andy Balberni. I believe you need someone to anchor the innings and then you give that liberty to the others to be able to open his arm. Even doctor it all the way down, you come and he can hit. So you want to hold one end tight. It's beautifully bowled again. A little bit of uh, aggression out there between Camphor and also Rashid Khan. <laughs> And then just the wink. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful character. Four runs of four deliveries. Yeah, since the spinners have been introduced, it's been a different kettle of fish in terms of how Ireland have gone about the scoring. When we came on three overs ago, it was uh, well above the required rate. Firebird production for Afghanistan Cricket Board, of course. That's a pretty reasonable shout. I think it's going down the leg side, actually. I think that's a pretty good call. In the end, it's five off the over. 11 gone, 78 for three. I don't think Ireland should be too concerned right now. Seven wickets in hand, 75 they need. They need to go at 8.33 runs per over. That means they need a boundary, at least one boundary per over. So they shouldn't be too concerned. Well, Bernie working that one on the leg side. It's just going to be one. Well, the bat face just closed on the point of contact with the ball, and it's probably a good thing because it hasn't carried through to the deep mid wicket. This is a bit interesting. Let's see how it goes because Rashid was certainly not happy. Yeah, good call. Good call that from Bismillah Jan Shinwari. The birthday man celebrating his 40th birthday. Bismillah Jan Shinwari. I think Muhammad Nabi should bowl his quota. In the previous game, he only bowled two overs, gave away nine runs. See, the spin has really brought the game back into. Rashid Khan asking, asking. Finally, okay. It's beautifully bold. Very hard hit for boundaries. That's the problem they've got, Ireland, right now. It's been 22 deliveries since the boundary's been hit. That tells. Pressure building. Yeah, three singles off uh, the first three balls of the over. They've got to get a boundary now. Got to be one boundary the next uh, three deliveries. Nabi takes it. Hit it up in the air. First grab. Luckily, it went straight up. Big smile on his face now, so he's picked up his first wicket. That's what happens when you need to get boundaries, when you don't get boundaries early in the over. You've got to try something different, and against Nabi, it's tough. Very good catch in the end. I think it's hit quite high up on the bat, and so didn't have momentum. Going back towards the bowler. Bit of a juggle. Holds on in the end. It's a good option from... Kampfer looking to go over the bowler's head, but doesn't get the elevation. And Ireland sink deeper into trouble. Curtis Kampfer goes for six. It's 81 for four. One for eight, two balls shy of two overs now. Mohamed Nabi, George Dockrell into the lineup today. He was ill in the first uh, T20, didn't play. 
He's got a tough call when he arrives. Straight away, he's got to be aggressive. Works that away, only the single. So what that does, just that single, puts now big pressure back on Balberni. Yeah, let's look at the wicket. That was some brilliant catching from Muhammad Nabi. You rightly called that. You have to attack from the first ball in the over. And Muhammad Nabi on the rebound takes that safely. What Rashid couldn't do in the previous over, Nabi completed in his over. What's Balberni going to do with his last ball? Only four at this stage. And it rounds off at five. Top stuff from Nabi. 12 gone, 83 for four. It all looked so good for Ireland when Balburnie and Sterling were together. 49 for the first wicket. How this match has fluctuated, though. Swung one way, then the other. And at the moment, you'd say it's advantage Afghanistan. Karote back into the attack. Every dot ball ratchets up the pressure just that little bit more. Andrew and Devenda alongside me. Well, I'll tell you what it is, Brian. It's, it's vintage Ireland versus Afghanistan, isn't it? A classic encounter. They always ebb and flow. There's always drama. And every time one side gets in front, the other seems to come back at them in a big way. And I'd go further than what you're saying right now, Brian. I think Afghanistan are all over Ireland with their spinners right now. And it was always about Afghan spinners versus Irish batters. Like Irish seamers versus Afghan batters. <laughs> Ireland needs 69 of 45. Big boost for Ireland, though, is getting George Dockrell back. Missed out with the illness the other night. There's been plenty going around between the two camps over the, the two and a half weeks of the tour. With due respect to Neil Rock, who will find his way in the international game. Dockrell, big boost with his hitting. It's gone over backward point. You're right there, Andrew. And don't forget, of course, these two in a one-day international in Dehradun in 2019 this pair added 143 together to set up a four wicket win against Afghanistan different format but good memories end of the over 86 for four and the evolution of Dockrell's game is I think it's unparalleled, really, isn't it, in terms of, of reinvention as a completely new kind of cricketer. And the fact he went away and did so much of that himself, added 15, well, 10 to 15 kilograms in muscle, pure muscle. He's always been a tall, he was originally a very lanky left-arm spinner. But he identified that he wasn't going to get back into the team like that. He had to add muscle to become a power hitter. What a power hitter he has become. He's really strong down the ground, and that's where I think he'll have to target, particularly against Mohamed Nabi's remaining two overs. Look at that, 32 balls now since the last boundary. No, Balburnie actually mentioned about Dockerell a couple of years ago when he was starting to come back into the side. He almost compared him to Steve Smith. That was the name he used. Smith, of course, started as a spinner. I think that's a really good shout, actually. That's maybe the only the other one. He did start as a leg spinner, made his test debut at Lords against Pakistan, that Spirit of Cricket series back in 2010. Can't be easy to really change the discipline that you do. But where he likes to hit is all the way from deep extra cover round to wide long on. 
that's where his powerful levers can come into play for Ireland and they need to start to break that string of boundaries. We are going to go upstairs just to have a, a little look, I think, but safely home. Fairly straightforward decision, that one. Every ball looks bold, without a boundary. Ireland's asking rate goes up and up. It's now 9.85. Just a slight change, asking the fieldsman at the deep mid wicket goes slightly to his right hand side. <laughs> so, Karote has bowled three overs. It's holding its fine. Fieldsman on the boundary. Wants the second run, sent back rightly so. So Faruqi has bowled two overs, going for 19. Two overs for Navin Ulhak, who will be asked and be given the task of bowling in the death overs. One over left for Karote, one for Rashid. Navi is into his third over. Fielded by the captain. 14 overs gone, 90 for four. Yeah, you do suspect that Afghanistan are going to be thinking about bowling 12 overs of spin tonight. They only bowled 10 two days ago, and they combined for five for 45. Not going to be too different tonight. Don't rule out another wicket or two. Afghanistan are playing to their strength with the ball, and if Fazalak Faruqi and Naveen Al Haq are better at the death tonight, all of a sudden that this task of what is now more than 10 runs required per over for Ireland is going to become very difficult. I think surely George Dockrell has to line up either Karote or Nabi here in one of the two spinners remaining overs to try and get a big one or maybe two maximum straight down the ground. <laughs> Darts it in, Karote. Cramps Dockrell for room, he's frustrated. His areas will be straight down the ground, flat and straight down the ground. And again, darting the ball in. It's no opportunity for Dockrell to go down the ground between long off and long on at the moment. Again, you talk about the familiarity between these two sides. They know that's where Dockrell wants to hit. He's just not getting anything to work with. Is he full enough of length to get it into the slot to show us that power that he now possesses down the ground? And for Balberni, well, he's playing the anchor role, but he just can't find a way to get that strike rate above 100. A prolific sweeper, yes. Karote may be too flat through the air to play that shot to. Terrific stuff, this. It really is. Darting that ball in. Leg stump, giving the batters nothing to work with at all. Every dot ball is being applauded. It's a good shot, really good improvisation from Balberni, getting across his stumps, fine leg up in the circle, helping it over the fielder and getting a much-needed boundary for Ireland. Well, finally, just a touch of that pressure is released. It's to that sweep shot that Balberni does favour. But realistically, the wrong line from Karote. An error from him, well put away by Balberni. 
Oh, the finger goes up. LBW. Balberni can't believe the decision. He's frustrated. He thinks he hit it, I think. But the finger's gone up, and so he's going to have to make his way off the ground. Crushing blow for Ireland. And so much excitement for Afghanistan. He considered boundary. Well, that well, little bit of the blow of the batsman, of the bat. Interesting replay coming up. Suffering across, pitching in lines. Difficult to tell. Would have gone on to hit this stumps, that's for sure. Hit his glove first, though. Balberni, understandably frustrated. But the umpire is the ultimate arbiter. And he has to go 95 for 5. Gareth Delaney in at number seven. 58 required from the last five overs for Ireland. The most they've got ever in the last five overs to win a match was 55 against Scotland at Hobart in the World Cup in 2022. This is why Delaney is here. And you can see the ball came off the glove onto the pad. The finger went up. And Balburnie, well, can't believe it. There was no descent from Balberni, but he did take a long time to drag himself off, and that's why Brian Murgatroyd. Bold! Dockrell plays on. It ran off the face of the bat. Two wickets in two balls. And in Afghanistan, they're sending a triumph that will send this series to a decider. Good bowling chance, captain, bringing himself on. And striking immediately. Afghanistan now only four wickets away from a victory. Putting themselves in a commendable position. Excellent delivery once again from Rashid Khan. 3 for 13. With the scramble seam just holding its line. Chopping onto the stumps. Unlucky the batsman. Dockrell goes for five. 95 for six Ireland. Mark Adair in at number eight, part of a partnership with Harry Tector that yielded uh, 42 in the last three overs on Friday. He's going to have to perform something similar this time to get Ireland across the line. He certainly has the capability and the potential with the bat, but it's a tall task for Ireland, needing more than two runs per delivery now. Another wicket. Rashid says, you miss, I hit. Adair trying to improvise, got too far across his stumps. Four for Rashid, that's seven since he's come back from injury. Celebrations everywhere. That's the googly, shuffling across, exposing the stumps, Gurbaz. Shaq Rahimi is delighted behind the stumps. Celebrations at Sharjah, celebrations at Gandhar, Nangahar, Kabul. Adair goes for not 95 for 7.
Barry McCarthy, the new batter in at number nine. Rashid Khan, the seventh time he's taken four wickets or more in a 2020 international, the joint most by any bowler. Well, Ireland must wonder about their thoughts at night facing up to this man. It's the stuff of nightmares, really. He's now taken 48 wickets against Ireland in 21 T20Is. The average under 10. At an economy rate of in and around six, he's been simply too good with the ball tonight for Ireland. And everyone was so riveted by the return of Rashid Khan after that back surgery. Great to have him back. And the Afghan fans are seeing their hero almost certainly send it to a decider tomorrow night now. Oh, that's a cracking leg break. That really has gone an absolute mile. Well, if you're wondering why Rashid Khan is so difficult to face, just watch this delivery and bear in mind that very little change of action to the one that bowled Mark Adair behind his legs, which was the googly. This time it's the leg break. It's almost the exact same trajectory and delivered with no real discernible change in action. So for men who are new to the crease in the lower middle order, close to impossible to face. Big shout again. The umpire says not out. The batters are running. They've come back for two. And it's signalled as leg buys. It's the end of a dramatic over. And Ireland 98 for seven. As a look at uh, the match summary, the second one, we are set, it looks like, for a thriller tomorrow. For the third, Afghanistan 152 for nine. Nabi was brilliant with his 59 off 38. Adair picked up three. Ireland 98 for seven. Rashid, four for 14. Karote has got a couple. And Nabi's been very tidy. One for 14 off his three. Levine will huck now. Looking to uh, hit down the ground, but straight to mid-off it's quite deep yeah equation very difficult now for Ireland 55 and 23 is gettable and the problem is seven wickets have fallen and the personnel that's in the middle at the moment Delaney McCarthy have faced four balls between them I'm giving that one out too by the way I think that was out in the air going to be safe Sheed Khan has now taken 16 four wicket hauls in T20 crickets the most by any bowler earlier he was level with uh, Lastif and Linga and also uh, Shakib Hassan with uh, 15 now he's standing alone with 16 unbelievable stuff from Rashid Khan I reckon he should have had Pfeiffer picked up his uh, five it would have been the first to do that amazing stuff it's going to be tough to uh, decide who the player of the match is today two balls into the 17th dive up Rashid Khan very much in the running for player of the match clearly with the work that he's done four overs four for 14 Nabi as well with his 59 off 38 and his one for 14 off three. 
Ben White got it uh, yesterday with his four for 20. Let's look at the most four wicket hauls. Dragging that one on the onside. Just the single. That was those initial two wickets that he got in two balls. Lorcan Tucker, and then the next delivery. Beautiful googly to dismiss the informed man, Harry Tector. That, for me, really opened up the innings and slowed down that scoring rate because at that stage, we were scoring well above four to the over than what was needed, Ireland. If you think about their power play, they were uh, 51 for one. After six overs in the power play, they were off to an absolute blinder. Three wickets going down with 95 on the board. Another single. 102 for seven. Six for 37, actually, between Karote and also Rashid. They've done all the damage so far. Navi uh, has only picked up the one at this stage. Karote and Rashid, the rest. Outstanding work from Rashid Khan. Start of the 18th over now. Faruqi charging in. Let's launch that. He said that very well. Has that gone all the way for six? Sure has. That's a great shot. Clean striker, Gareth Delaney. Holds the bat right at the top of the handle so he gets good elevation. He's a natural six hitter in Ireland. Don't have many who hit the ball as cleanly for six as Gareth Delaney when he's on song. Right in the arc, right in the slot for Uki, who's been a little bit off. Truth be told, with the ball on this series. Delaney and McCarthy can hit. McCarthy has a T20i half century against India not long ago, so there's still a bit of hope if you're an Ireland fan. Oh, that's nicely played too. Down the ground, this one. That's right out of the middle. Two and two. 12 off the first two balls. Fine cricket. Well, there's certainly one thing you can't do to Gareth Delaney, and that's ball length. And that's exactly what he's done these first two deliveries of the over. This is an even better strike. Back over the bowler's head. I'll tell you what, Tino, you know, it's poor bowling, though. You mentioned the length. It's just, it's in the arc. It's a hit-me ball. Yes, Delaney's still got to find the middle of the blade, but Faruqi, he's just bowling on a length. He's not changing the pace. He's not going from... A wide Yorker, we saw him in the ODIs with his brilliant Yorkers. Change of pace that time. Always at his best, of course, for Ricky when he's swinging the ball. Often finds it hard to come back. He's uh, generally really good right at the, the top. Slower delivery, little cutter. Well, in fact, it's a bit of a, a left arm orthodox spinner, that one. Thirty-nine and fifteen. Another one. Clever stuff. Nicely bowled. Well executed. Should have just done that from the beginning of the over. Very well disguised those last two slow balls, and he's certainly bamboozled Gareth Delaney. 
He's way through that one before the ball's got to him. Where's he going to go now? Is it going to be the full straight Yorker? No, it's not. It's going to be another length delivery. And it's going to be deposited far, far over the long on boundary. That's out the stadium. I warned you, Faruqi, Delaney is a dangerous customer. Have a look at the swing. Uncomplicated, that high back lift, clean swing of the blade. That's a lovely, lovely strike right on the roof. Faruqi's getting absolutely panned here. Now then, Ireland. Most expensive over of the game. 18 and still a ball to bowl. He hit to Hayden Walsh Jr. for four sixes in one over in a row, actually, in St. Kitts. That's the West Indies. Hayden Walsh Jr. is a leggy. He's got that away for four. What a big over this is. That is outstanding hitting. Very nicely played. 22 off at 18 gone, 124 for seven. Three sixes and a four in that last over, 22 off it, has given them a little sniff here. 29 required in two overs. Unbelievable hitting. Well, an over ago, we were talking about Delaney having faced three or four balls, got nothing on the board. What a barrage of sixes in that previous over. Boundary to end it. Don't bowl on the slot, you're going to disappear. Oh, it's got bottom edge, not too far away for that off stump. I had a bit of a rattle there, that didn't hit it off stump, did it? I think it might have, might have nicked that off stump. I'm with you, I heard something through the mic again, yeah. Twice tonight. First was Mark Adair, and now Naveen has failed to dislodge the bales. Hazy, well caught. Let's have a look and see if it did. Inside edge, bottom edge, might have just hit that off stump. Oh, it did too. Oh, it's hit the hit the uh, audio box. Where the mic is uh, placed. So a dot ball for starters. They can't afford any more dot balls. They've got to get to going big again. McCarthy on strike. He's got to hit fours, sixes if he can. Forehand cross court, just a single. It's Delaney back on strike. Yeah, not a bad result, Hazy. McCarthy is a good hitter, but Delaney is the man. Gareth Delaney is the man who's going to win the game for Ireland. If Ireland have a chance here, it's going to be Gareth Delaney. Naveen is going to have to use all his skills. A great comeback from Naveen. A couple of nights ago, got absolutely pumped for 52, I think it was. And tonight he's bounced back brilliantly. That 3.2 overs north for 13. So just shows the skills that Naveen has. 28 off 10. That's what they need. Got to go big. Had a, uh, a troublesome night two nights ago, Naveen Huck. That's been clubbed. How far has that gone? It's in the air. On the bounce. So it was in the game for a while. Just the single. Beautifully fielded. How oh, Ireland would have loved that to go a little bit straighter. And allow Gareth Delaney to get back on strike. Pace off the ball, so that's why it was difficult for him to get it further forward than he did. 27 and 9. His next three deliveries crucial. Yeah, you've got to get at least two boundaries. In the next three, ideally three, of course, but at least two. Well, it's not, the th I don't think that's right. You've got to try and hit boundaries. No, no point getting Delaney back on strike. I think you've got to try and play the game as well because you're running out of balls. Uh, good bowling again, though. The change up, and it causes Tino Navino hack. His action is so, well, I call it slightly awkward action. It's hard to pick up the change of pace. 
Misfields, no real damage. Great over. Three singles. Need two over the ropes here, Ireland. Yeah, that single was put a lot of pressure now. It'll be 18 off the last over. Two fours. Straight down the ground. Might have split it. They have. That's a boundary. There's one four. Need another one off the last. Then it'll be 18 off the last over. We've got 22 off the la the previous over. Yeah, good strike. And I say so because of the pace off the ball. It's not easy on this surface to get that ball away over the bowler's head as he did. Most of the other batsmen would be looking to go leg side with that. It's amazing the difference one big over makes in this sort of situation. Now they're getting a little bit edgy out there. Afghanistan. Rashid Khan going to have a long chat to Naveen Haq. They've got fine leg and third man both inside the circle. He'll be looking to go long, be looking to go straight. He's hoping it's going to be in the slot, but if he gets an edge or a top edge, it's going to go for four. Slice that away like a rocket, and that's gone for four. That's beautifully played. Fine striking at the end, two boundaries, 11 from the over, 19 gone, 135 for seven, 18 off the last. Eighteen runs off this over to win the series. That's what it's all about. It'll be the sixth time if they do it. They've won a bilateral series in T20 internationals. Twenty-two runs off over number eighteen. Long chat between Delaney and McCarthy at the end of that over. Here's a look at the last ball, the last over. Well, he went for that wide Yorker. Delaney was up to it again. Good hands, really good hands from Delaney. Now, McCarthy, five from seven. Does he try and go big and potentially risk a swing and a miss and chew up a door ball? Or will he just give Delaney a strike? He's got to go. He has to go for it. If he hits it and hits it well and only gets a one, then Delaney gets down. If he hits a boundary, then all the better. If it's a dot ball. Then they might have a bit of an issue. Faruqi. Three overs, none for 41 at the moment. Went for 22, last over. Oh, it's a beautiful delivery. That is a massive delivery. Nicely bowled by Faruqi. It's a great Yorker, isn't it? He's got to get this right. Because he can't afford a boundary. And as you said, if they can't get a boundary, they should look for the single. There's not much he can do with that. You take yourself back to the ODIs. He bowled so well, those Yorkers. One particularly over, he got five out of six, spot on, then cleaned up Mark Adair, if you remember. I reckon they might be thinking about running a bye here if he misses it. Single. It's Delaney on strike. A lot of work to be done these last four balls now. Super over, maybe, four fours. Well, it's only half 11, why not have a super over? Stay till half 12. Might as well sleep here tonight. She's coming back for the third one tomorrow, aren't we, Dino? Yeah, after we see what happens with these final four balls. I think it might just be a little too much for Delaney to do. This partner shoots 41 off 23. Oh, it's superbly bowled by Faruqi. That is magnificent work, Faruqi. He's nailing those Yorkers superbly. Had a real problem in the last over. His length was rank pretty much and he got hammered now he's come back and he's bowled brilliantly he has economy at the death in his career t20 i creek is 7.72 pretty good numbers that just shows his skill pumped as you mentioned previous over but comes back in style here it's got to go into the stands now and that one does go into the stands that's six that's right out of the middle. That's a very fine shot. Now it's 11 off two. 
Low full toss, slammed for six. Gareth Delaney. Surely not. Surely not. He keeps Ireland alive. Low full toss. He won't have any problems putting this away. It is St. Patrick's Day. Ireland very rarely lose on Paddy's Day. <laughs> Just off. Oh, a foot wrong. Misses the Yorker by a foot. Delaney good enough. 39 from 16. Striking at 2 4 3. Yeah, a little bit of worry. Ten minutes ago, game was done and dusted. 11 off two, 10 for... Ooh, a lovely super over, why not? Oh, that's the crucial delivery, delivery. this is it. If this doesn't go out uh, of the ground, then it's, we're done. Unless he happens to overstep or ball something is a little bit too high. There's an extra delivery. Over the wicket. They don't run for it. Don't take the single. Afghanistan have done this. One more to go, celebrations in the stand. Looks like it's going to be one all. Delaney's done a fine job, 39 off 17. Outstanding work from him. A little bit of a smile from Rashid Khan, quite rightly. Brilliant comeback after losing two days ago. Not quite done. Still got to make sure they get uh, their feet in the right spot and the ball the right height. It's a full toss. Hammers that. Might be out, is out, it's all over. Afghanistan are delighted. They have won this one. What a performance. It is one all in the series now. Afghanistan win by 10 runs. One all, we are set up for an absolute beauty tomorrow. Terrific work, Afghanistan. Yeah, brilliant from Afghanistan. Take yourself back three or four hours. They were 14 for four with the bat. Somehow turned this game around and kept the series alive. Gareth Delaney, super knock. Not quite out of the middle, the man of the deep at all. Simple catch, and that's victory for the Blue Army and their devoted fans. We're all set for number three. What a brilliant game of cricket. Once again, played with an excellent spirit between two sides who have a great respect for each other, but. For the series and the fans all around the world, it's set up beautifully. Yeah, outstanding performance from Afghanistan to make sure they keep themselves alive in the series. Didn't start at all well for them. 14 for four at one stage. Outstanding work from Muhammad Nabi in particular, as well as uh, the captain towards the end of the innings to give themselves a respectable total. And then after a really good start with the bat for Ireland, and their backs were against the wall, but the captain, Rashid Khan, came and spun his web of magic over the Irish batters, set up what was, in the end, a close but well-fought victory for Afghanistan. It is Afghanistan's lowest win over Ireland in T20 internationals. Sorry, narrowest win, I should say, over Ireland in T20 internationals. So uh, quite tight in the end. And they were getting a little bit worried, that's for sure. It's a terrific uh, comeback because they were in a lot of trouble. At one stage, they weren't going to make 100. And it's because of Nabi, they got to that uh, 140. Well, they get 152 for nine in the end. And Rashid Khan made sure they didn't go much further than uh, where they ended up because there was a little spurt at the end. His four for 14 was outstanding work. So Afghanistan will be really pleased with this. Their supporters were delighted as well. And I'm sure spectators or people watching this telecast Ireland uh, supporters will be disappointed, but Afghanistan supporters will be very happy. But we are set up for something special tomorrow, and that's going to be uh, fun to watch. A couple of fun games so far in this T20 international series. Right, time to go downstairs now and join Fadai. We're here with Mohammad Navi, 59 runs, brilliant batting. At one stage, Afghanistan were four down, only 14 runs. You put together a great partnership of 79 runs. Walk us through, how was it out there? Uh, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Yeah, it's uh, a little bit of pressure on the first few overs. But uh, when we uh, realized the wicket is uh, really good for the batting, uh, then we were told to my partner, uh, Sadiq, that uh, just uh, play ball to ball, uh, we will get the boundaries. Yeah, that's why we uh, put a good uh, partnership uh, on that wicket. 
Back to the bowling. You have best figures against Ireland, four for ten. Once again, you bowled brilliantly and got one wicket and gave away only 14 runs. How was it in the middle? Did you think that Gerrit Delaney could have taken the game away? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, wicket is uh, not that much easy for the uh, uh, for the batter when the bowler uh, spinner bow, uh, bowling on that kind of a track because uh, there's no dew uh, on the ground as well and also bowl a little bit gripping. And uh, if you bowl uh, uh, variation on that kind of pitch, it's tough to hit here. Yeah. As a spinner, the young debutant Nangyalai Harote brilliantly bowled against Paul Sterling. How was that wicket for you as a spinner? How did yeah, you well, that, enjoy? That was a match uh, changing wicket as well because Paul Sterling is a, a dangerous batsman as well for the, of the Ireland uh, side. And, uh, and also they have a good uh, partnership as well, uh, opening partner. And that, that was a crucial wicket, yeah. Well, how do you see the series now that it is square? Do you think you can come strong and win it 2-1? Yeah, we'll try our best uh, to play a good cricket uh, and uh, hopefully we'll win it. Well, thank you very much. You played brilliantly today. Thank you for having uh, this little chat with us. Thank you. Outstanding performer for Afghanistan again this evening. Mohamed Nabi. 45 and 44 for Balberni. He lasted a little bit longer than his captain, Paul Sterling, but he also scored quite quickly. His 24 coming in just 15 balls. Bit of a mess in the middle part of the innings, and then it was that outstanding onslaught from Gareth Delaney with 39 and 18, but not enough for Ireland in the end. Six bowlers use Faruqi. Expensive. Naveen was much better tonight, North for 23. 10 dots for Naveen al -Hak. Two for 33 from Karote, the youngster who's impressing, but the pick of the bowlers, who else? Rashid Khan, four for 14 with 13 dots. Started so promisingly for Ireland. This man is in tip-top form. Well, Bernie broke the shackles early. Played a couple of really nice strokes. That could have been an opportunity. Field that just a little too close in the outfield, but how well did Ireland play square of the wicket today, in particular on that offside? And it was an absolute peach from Karatai to dismiss Paul Sterling, and this is when the trouble started. Next to go, Lorcan Tucker looking to wrap the ball over that fielder at 45, and the next ball to dismiss, who's been an outstanding batter for Ireland in this white ball series, Harry Tector, first ball up. And then a bit of a juggle. In the end, good catch taken to dismiss Curtis Camper. And Andrew Balberni was a judge to LBW straight off the glove onto Pat. That is a poor decision. Balberni was rightfully angry, agree. Then Dockrell back in the side after a illness. Inside edge onto toe, onto stump. Mark Adair. Not the right option. Ireland getting funky once again when they didn't need to. Have a look at this. Garrett Delaney stand and hit through the line of the ball. Nothing complicated about this. This is as pure muscle. Long levers, holds the blade nice and high in the handle. He is a natural boundary hitter. Someone Ireland are crying out for. And while Delaney was at the crease, Ireland had a sniff. Slicing and siding the ball through the offside. Four maximums for Garrett Delaney to go with his three fours. In the end, he was outdone by Fazal Hak Faruqi, who cleaned up the back end of the innings and got the win for Afghanistan. So it's one all after the first two, all to play for tomorrow evening in the Atisala T20 International Series. Afghanistan 152, electing to bat first. Nabi 59, Atal 35 and 32, Rashi 25. Adair in the wickets again, three for 27. It was 45 from Balberni that started off the innings well and then the onslaught right at the end of 39 and 18 from Delaney. But it wasn't enough. Rashid Khan, 4 for 14. Karate, 2 for 23. Afghanistan by 10 runs. The series is tied. 1-0. Right, we're going to take a short break, but don't go away because when we come back, we will have the post-match presentation.
Yes, hello and welcome to the post-match presentation for the second Afghanistan versus Ireland T20I match and what a cracking classic encounter we've seen between these two great old rivals. It ebbed and flowed. Ireland were right on top at first before Afghanistan came roaring back with the bat and in the end Afghanistan held off that late fight back to win by 10 runs. I'd like to start by introducing my presentation party across to my left, starting with Mr. Abdul Rahman Fida, who's part of the Afghan Council General in Dubai. Next to him is Mr. Abhishek Ja, a board mem member for Hedge and Sachs, one of our sponsors. Then Mr. Abedullah Sadarkil, who's a board member for the, of the Afghan Afghanistan Cricket Board. And finally, Ms. Aishwarya Bagat Kumar, a customer engagement manager for Ian Money. You're all very welcome, everyone. Great to have you alongside me. OK, we've got lots of awards to give out, three of them in total. But before we get to them, a huge thanks to our sponsors. Firstly, Etisalat Afghanistan, Super Cola, Bank Milli Afghan and Hedge Sachs for their fantastic contribution towards cricket in Afghanistan. Those awards are going to start now with the stylish player of the match. And that first award will be presented by Mr. Abedullah Sadarkil, who's a board member of the ACB. And they're going to receive a cheque for 25,000 Afghani. And it goes to the one and only Mohammed Nabi for his brilliant innings of 59 off 38 balls. And also a great contribution with the ball as well, one for 14. And yet another award for the grand old statesman, the great servant of Afghan cricket. Very well played, Mohammed Nabi. Okay, our second award, this is new for the T20 series, we had it a couple of nights ago, and it's going to be the check for 40,000 Afghan for the biggest six hitter of the day. And this one ebbed and flowed like some of our other awards, and it's going to go to Ireland's Gareth Delaney for his four maximums. It was a brilliant late cameo from Gareth Delaney, he made 39 off just 18 balls and so nearly got Ireland over the line. But the series is now tantalisingly poised at one apiece. Okay, we're going to now speak to one of the two captains. We'll speak to Ireland's Paul Sterling. Well, Sterling, what an incredible game of cricket, firstly. How much did you enjoy that out there? It was a thrilling contest. Another brilliant game, yeah. It seems like we just cough up these games out of nowhere and they always seem to be close. So I'm actually really happy with how we performed. Um, delighted with, with coming back into the game when we felt we were out as well. So lots of positives to work on and we've got another chance tomorrow to try and win a series. It feels as though despite the defeat tonight, there's a fantastic atmosphere amongst the Irish camp, the energy levels, the, the camaraderie between the team. It's never been higher. Is this as close as a unit you've been in an awfully long time? I think it's good. It's just uh, it's something we, we don't have to work on too hard. It's something we naturally have. We've been out here for a month together and it feels like a family feel. So we, we know there's only another day left and, and hopefully we can put in another performance. Let's talk about the bowlers. Josh Little, Mark Adair outstanding at the top and at 14 for four you're all over Afghanistan. It took a very special innings from Mohammed Nabi and then a contribution from Rashid Khan to get Afghanistan up to an above par total. Absolutely, yeah. It seems to be the tale of the, st of the matches so far. Um, they, they bowled excellently up top and that, I think that partnership from Afghanistan was brilliant to bring them back into the game as well. So it's very tit, for tit for tat, so more, more to come. What about the position with the batting? You were 49 for none. You looked in great control. Yourself and Andy Balberni were going well, but those old problems against spin have come back to haunt you. I think you lost seven for 46 to their spinners. Yeah, look, that seems to be a, the norm here as well for us. Uh, something for us to work on. We, we have been in, in the nets and it just hasn't been happening for us out in the middle. You also have to take into account you're playing against world-class players and probably one of the best attacks in world cricket. So take a com combination of those things um, and, sat and land somewhere in the middle. And hopefully we can improve that for tomorrow. Bit of a word for Gareth Delaney, having that extra depth in the batting, I think is a real asset to you in, in this format. And he showed his, his power hitting at its very best there. Yeah, he's, we know how hard he can hit the ball and he, he's getting improving every, every year he plays. So I think it's, it's good for someone to be able to come in and do what he's done today. Uh, it's a really important position for us to hit sixes at the back end and he did that delightfully today. Just finally, very quickly, tomorrow night, can you win the series? Of course, I think we've seen over the last month that it's been tit for tat, as I said. I think we just need to be better in those periods where it's slightly going against us and hopefully that'll be enough. Sterling, thanks so much for talking to us. Good luck tomorrow night. 
That's Paul Sterling, the captain of Ireland. It will be a thrilling finale tomorrow night. Now, you might have noticed we haven't spoken to Rashid Khan yet, and we haven't presented our player of the match yet. So our final award is going to be presented with a cheque for 50,000 Afghani. That will be presented by Miss Aishwarya Bagat Kumar. It will be followed by the player of the match trophy to be presented by Mr. Abdul Rahman Fida, of the Afghan Council General in Dubai. It was another split decision up in the commentary box. It really could have gone either way between maybe two of Afghanistan's best of all time. A special mention for Mohammed Nabi with his brilliant contribution, but the player of the match for his 25 off 12 balls and a quite wonderful spell of leg spin bowling with four for 14. That's seven wickets in two games from now. The player of the match, it's Rashid Khan. So Rashid will firstly receive his cheque for 50,000 Afghani, being presented by Miss Ashwarya Bagat Kumar. And Rashid will also now receive his trophy for the player of the match, presented by Mr. Abdul Rahman Fida. Sensational performance. Give it up again for Rashid Khan. And finally, I'd like, ask Rash like to ask Rashid Khan to come up and be interviewed by my co-commentator, Ahmed Fadai. Mubarak, Lobamun and Wagatala. موبائل <laughs> بالکل ٹی ٹوینٹی لوبا کے شروعات ڈیر مہم ہی خوش بیاد آگا سے بچ شروعات کم بیک ڈیر مشکل ہی خو یا واضح پلان ہم امدہ ہو چاہے جائے پارنرشپ پر جوڑو اپر ٹی ٹوینٹی کے دو لوب گاڑی رنزنو کا نوما گا ٹوٹل حدف چیزے یونیم سلطی اصل سلویق ترسی ہوتا ہم حدف ہم امدہ ہو یا اصل سلویق پانزوز پر خر رنزنی سنگا چی نبی و صدیق لوبا مخی اوڑا آگے نروستا سنگا فینش شو نو ٹی ٹو موسیقی سیریس مبارا بارکو راتلون کی لوبت سنگا گورے گھٹا لائے سائی کوشش بکڑو انشاءاللہ چھے خلو بتر سر اکڑو ایف اوٹو کلو با گراؤنڈ کے امدہ حدف امنا نمو ریزلٹ جدا خبر دا خود دوٹولو حدف کوشش پدائی چھے با گراؤنڈ کی خوز علی گو آکا بولنگی کی بیٹنگی آکا فیلڈنگی بدری والو برخو کی با منگ سل پرسنٹا کوشش کلو نو یوازی کوشش تا دی منگ بلاس کی ریزلٹ اللہ پلاس کی نو گورو چھے انشاءاللہ well, uh, that was uh, with Rashid Khan, who believed that there were brief, nervous moments, but you only will look at one or two players can take the game away. Muhammad Nabi's inning of 59 was what brought Afghanistan to a respectable total. Look forward to the match tomorrow. Happy to have squared the series. And that is it from the presentation ceremony. Stay with us. The series is 1-1 one, one each, so the next one tomorrow will be the decider.
What a game that was. Match summary of ODI. Correction, T20 International, number two, Afghanistan, 152 for nine. And that was quite extraordinary because they were in so much trouble at one stage. It didn't look like they were going to get 100, but they got past the 150 mark, which is brilliant. Navi was superb, 59 of 38. Adair was uh, outstanding as well with three for 27. Josh Little Bob with some serious talent, picking up two for 20 of his four. McCarthy a couple, and Ireland in reply, only 142 for eight. Just a bit of a scare towards the end. For Afghanistan with a bridge too far, Barberni 45, Delaney 39 of 18 deliveries, and the star of the show, Rashid Khan, 4 for 14 or 4 overs, Karoti 2 for 23, and Afghanistan winning by 10 runs in the end, and the series is tied 1 all. So we're all set up for tomorrow. That's going to be a beauty, of course. We'll talk about that in a sec. But, uh, gee, it was a fine game today. And uh, it was ebbed and flowed again, as all these games have done between Afghanistan and also Ireland. I've got Niall and also Brian alongside me. Niall, let me uh, start with you. You're on the wrong side today, Ireland. <laughs> How do you reflect on it? Yeah, listen, I think from the neutral point of view, it's great for tomorrow to set the series up. Um, one thing, normally a T20 game, Hazy and Brian, you win it and dominate the power play, you generally win the match. Now, Ireland dominated both power plays. First of all, with the ball in hand, they were sensational yep. in that first six, getting early wickets and give, restricting Afghanistan and giving them nothing to work with. And then with the bat in hand, which is always going to be a difficult chase, and we've mentioned it numerous times, over 140, 150, is difficult here in Sharjah, but they dominated the batting power play. So it's a difficult one, really, I think, when Ireland is sitting in the dressing room tonight, right now, and I can just see over your left shoulder the management having a chat, I think they'd be scratching their heads a bit because they've dominated both power plays and they've come up short, uh, losing by 10, albeit it could have been a lot worse. So I think it's a difficult game for Ireland to really reflect on. I just trying to think, 14 for four, you know, did they let them off the hook? I don't think so. I think Afghanistan fought really well. I like the way Naby played with the bravery yeah, to attack. Yep. He attacked when Ireland were right on top, and that shows a lot of courage. I think Afghanistan, I think you just got to give them credit. They played really well. Uh, you mentioned the, the 14 for four, but uh, the power play, by the way, when they were batting, 51 for one uh, after the six overs. They were off like a, like a rocket at that stage. Brian, what about yourself? How do you reflect on it? Well, I think that's only the second time in the history of 2020 internationals that a side has been in that position at the start of the match, as Afghanistan were at 14 for four, and still gone on and won the match. It was a remarkable comeback, and you've got to give a lot of credit to Mohamed Nabi. That was a fantastic innings uh, from him. But then on top of that, Rashid Khan, goodness me, absolutely wonderful, wasn't he? He just, uh, as ever, you miss, I hit. Yeah. And uh, the crucial... The crucial stage of the match, really, in that chase was him getting Harry Tech to first ball, I yep. think. As soon as he got Tech to, the door was open, if you like, and, uh, well, the spinners rushed through it. We'll see that shortly, but first of all, let's have a look at uh, Mohamed Nabi, his uh, 59. I mean, this was a terrific performance. 59 off uh, 38 deliveries, Brian, and, and really got them uh, to 150-plus, which was certainly not the case, we thought, when he came in. Well, it was set up for Nabi, really, wasn't it? Uh, experience counted. And uh, from his perspective, what an evening to become the leading run scorer in Afghanistan T20 internationals. It really was, cometh the hour, cometh the man. And, uh, well, he got a great reception here at Sharjah and he deserved every second of it. Well, in a partnership of 79 and 58 as well with Atto, so it was uh, fine work. But Mohamed Nabi was absolutely unbelievable. He was uh, very good with the ball as well. Just, uh, what was it, one for 14, I think? Yeah, his, three. Only bowled three. Yeah, three. Second overs. game in a row, he hasn't bowled full yeah. four compliment. Maybe something I've cast, I might think tired, about. He was all the runs were scoring. He just maybe. hit fours and sixes. He didn't run. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Rashid Khan, let's just uh, oh, talk wow. about him. I mean, how good how is he? How long we got? Yeah, how good was he? First of all, with, with the batting. I mean, a brilliant little cameo with the bat. Yeah, 25 on out right at the back end. Some sensational hitting. Beautiful, beautiful hands through the line of the ball you know that was good because McCarthy was taking pace off so he got down the pitch this is your favorite Hazy the no look flick out of Sharjah he's got that arrogance and in the nicest possible way the belief in his ability uh, as a batter not just as a bowler he's a genuine all-rounder now Rashid Khan and this is so good to see uh, again I'm not sure it's the right option I'm waxing lyrical about here it comes here it comes here it comes what's a cracker well yeah. you have to bowl a beauty to get rid of Harry Techter because he's playing so well George Dockle missed the last game through a bit of illness, not easy. That's just, it's a bad option again. Ireland, once again, not quite picking the right options. I'm not saying hazy. It's easy to face Rashi Khan because, believe me, I'm in Rashi Khan's pocket many, many <laughs> times. So I'm not really the best person. But the options you're taking. We saw Mohamed Nabi. How did he hit? Hit down the ground. Yep. Through the line of the ball. Ireland are going too square and it's cost him. Twice now, two games in a row. And uh, what a treat, Brian, to see these spinners. I mean, they've got all these spinners. Both sides have got spinners that are doing a wonderful job. 
Karoti, Nabi, Rashid Khan. Rashid Khan, amazing, isn't it? He's been out for four months with a back injury. Well, he's, he's come back a, and he's not missed a beat, surgery. has he? Yeah. He's uh, got seven wickets in these two games. Yep. And with the backup of Karoti and Nabi as well, they look really effective in those middle overs uh, to Afghanistan. But credit as well to Ireland. They bowled pretty well with the spin as well. Delaney and White, that was steady stuff from them. They were attacking the stumps. But... Yeah, at the end of the day, it was just, a, as you said earlier, a bridge too far for uh, Ireland to get past that score. I think we saw, didn't we, beforehand, 151 was the, was the average score batting first, and usually you yep. win here in Sharjah. And, well, it was exactly that, really, wasn't it? I, mean, I think one of the stories also is the fact that uh, uh, Rashid Khan bounced back, no problem. He bowled yesterday, two days ago, bounced back, no problem uh, today, and, and got the player of the, of the, of the series, player of the, uh, the match award. And he's going to have to bounce back again tomorrow mm. as well because they're des desperately going to need him again tomorrow. Yes. Uh, it, let's, see, let's see how he... he he uh, pulls up, but I have to say he looks uh, looks like a spring chicken running around the outfield after the game as well. So um, I think one of the things that Afghanistan have done, they've managed him very conservatively. Uh, he's been here for a while working with their, their strength and fitness conditioner. They've made sure he's absolutely hot to trot because, of course, let's not forgot, forget, he's got a lot of cricket coming up. Yeah. He's off to the IPL yeah. with the Gujarat. Uh, Titans and then off the back of that Afghanistan will be desperate to have him at the T20 World Cup yep. so uh, you can be sure that they weren't using him at all unless he was 100% fit which he's shown he is uh, in these two matches Player of the match, instrumental in uh, the victory today but let's now turn to Ireland I mean, let's go through a couple of the performances uh, Mark Adair, 3 for 27, a couple of wickets on a hat-trick again, not for the first time in the series Yeah, I think we have about 5 or 6 players on a hat-trick uh, excellent for Mark Adair he's, he's always been a, such a good power play bowler generally in conditions that suit him you would say someone like Ireland, he could swing the ball actually on this tour, when the ball isn't swinging, he's shown exceptional skills, Mark Adair that's lovely, full straight. Uh, he's been a standout bowler. He has led this attack for the last 24 months, Hazy. And I think I mentioned it previously. I think the maturity. He was in England for a while playing county cricket. Didn't quite work for him. He's come back to Ireland three or four years ago. Full-time contract, living in Belfast, settled. And the coach, Heimerich Milan, said, listen, you're the senior bowler. You take this team. Tim Murtis is retired. You take this team and take this bowling attack by the scruff of the deck. And actually, he's doing a great job. And people like Mark, uh, Barry McCarthy, Josh Little, uh, Craig Young, they're really benefiting from him as well. And also showing a lot of passion, as we saw in that little uh, clip we just played. Balboni? Brian played nicely, 45 off uh, 43 balls. He's never going to be someone who's got a lot of boundaries, but he did an important job. He did, and let's not forget it's his 100th uh, T20 international this evening, only the fourth Ireland player to uh, reach that mark. He was so important, wasn't he, after that opening stand between himself and uh, also uh, Paul Sterling, because uh, wickets then started to tumble. He hung around and, uh, well, once he got out, that really was a disaster as far as uh, Ireland were concerned because that, that made uh, things really, really difficult for them. Except <laughs> Delaney. I mean, he, uh, he was worrying Afghanistan right towards the end. Uh, it was always going to be a tough call, but, gee, he had them concerned a bit. Yeah, he opened batting. When he first came at the side, he was generally used as an opening batter because he can play shots like this. He's slightly unconventional. You know, a lot of people speak about his, his where he holds the bat right at the top of the handle and he's got that unusual bat face that's wide open actually surprising he hits so well on the leg side hazy with that open blade but he's a really good bounty i think we are on at the back end he's as natural a six hitter as ireland have and it's something ireland have been crying out for they pushed him down the order hazy yeah. they said to balberta you open with sterling get us off to a decent start it's never going to be a 60 or 70. we need delaney at the back end to try and give that uh, get the game over the line or else put up by winning score so he that's a big plus for ireland that's a massive massive plus if he can do that and chip in with a couple of overs of leg spin that's a Big, big boost for Ireland. Yeah, that ticks a, a big box for yeah. them because they certainly need someone who can do that. Right, uh, boys, what about the final game? Brian, what are your thoughts leading into the, uh, the big one tomorrow? It's going to be very difficult for Ireland, I think, to bounce back. That would have been a crushing defeat for them uh, today. 14 for four, Afghanistan. They would have been thinking, hello, boys, we've won the series here. But obviously, they've been taken down a peg. And to come back against that Afghanistan spin attack uh, tomorrow is going to be really, really tough. I think, as Niall said a little earlier, they're just going to have to rethink their plans against uh, the Afghanistan spinners yeah. and look to go down the ground a lot more because we saw this evening those little clips uh, that, that appeared going square just doesn't work. And your thoughts about tomorrow? 
Great, can't wait. You know, yeah. we've been here for three or four weeks, the bubbling up from the test matches back in Abu Dhabi and the ODIs didn't go Ireland's way. This is brilliant. You know, truthfully, three game series, you want it going down to the wire. Ireland have got to dust themselves off. It's not long until we're going to be back here again. They've got to play spin better on. They've got to play yeah. spin much better. They've no time to practice mentally up here, Hazy. Get your plans in order. If you're an Ireland batter, get your plans in order so when you walk to the crease, you know exactly what you're going to do. Right, now, let's just give you uh, the times for tomorrow, by the way, before we go any further, just so you can log these so you know exactly what's going on. So it's back-to-back -back games, and this is uh, the third one. We're going to be starting our coverage at 7.40 p.m. local time, live from the Sharjah Cricket Stadium, and that is going to be a beauty. Afghanistan versus Ireland. It's one all at the moment and all to play for. Righto, boys. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Thank you Pleasure. very much. Thanks very much now for your thoughts. Very much. We'll look forward to you tomorrow as well. Righto. Hope you enjoyed all the action. We'll catch you tomorrow. Good night. I'm ready. <clears throat> what a topsy-turvy game that was. Afghanistan weren't going to get 100 at one stage. They got 152 for nine. Outstanding work for them. Navi was sensational, 59 off 38. That will uh, provide a very good support. Fine partnership between those two, by the way. Adair, three for 27. Little picked up a couple with some good skill. McCarthy also to Ireland, 142 for eight. It was just a bridge too far, even though Delaney smacked it right at the end. 39 off 18. Balburnie, 45 off 44. And Rashid Khan was the player of the match, four for 14, with his little cameo with the bat, 25 off 12, when uh, they were batting earlier. And then that uh, magnificent spell of four overs, four for 14. Karoti picked up a couple, and Afghanistan have won the series, uh, won the, uh, this game, sorry, the second uh, T20 International, by 10 runs, and the series is tied at one all. So plenty of action in this game, and of course uh, plenty of sixes as well, and the spinners again had the final say. I'm sure you enjoyed it. Until next time, it's bye for now.